Hello and welcome to the Graveyard Media Podcast, episode 7, 70, for the week of December 10th, 2018. Fuck, I have seven episodes all right. What year We're is really it? coming along. I said 2018. So, yeah. Seven episodes in 2018, man. You know, we need to put, post this podcast content up more. I mean, like, damn. I know everybody's asking for more podcast content. Yeah, it's all <laughs> anybody ever watches on our channel. <laughs> All right, we're going to talk about games and movies we've checked out this week and then do some video game news, of which there's kind of a lot this week. Yeah. Game also, there's a little happened. bit of movie news. Fortnite won every category, but uh interesting thing happened in between Fortnite winning every category. So It won, like, uh, no categories. It won, like, multiplayer. I think that's all yeah. it won. Yeah. God of War won every category. No, it didn't. Um... Red Dead won every category but Game of the Year, which God of War won. It, that's God of kind War of won another one, I swear. It, it, it won really like uh, Best one, Direction. I don't, I don't know. But Maybe we'll, we'll talk about. I it think later. it won Game. I, I think it won a Game of the War of the Year, and then it was like, oh yeah, by the way, it won this other thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't actually know the winners because I wasn't paying that much attention to that. Oh, part of okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. All right. Well, why don't we jump right into it and talk about Super Smash Brothers? All right. Oh, okay. You guys, all right. Just go off on that then. Have fun. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm a little, uh, little disturbed that Thel didn't go first, but Super Smash Bros. We can do that. Well, I feel like we're gonna talk about it for a while. It's true. So uh, we might as well, and that's what, that's what people want. I already yeah. know I'm gonna put the Super Smash Brothers poster all over this podcast and be like, ah. Uh, yeah okay so, Fair enough. Know, yeah that's what people care about yeah i mean i mean you're not give you're not the people wrong. what they want yeah also i want to so, talk about it <laughs> yeah okay i'm gonna go play so, doom because it's the 25th anniversary y'all have fun most of my <laughs> two people who've played smash brothers and one who made a video about being salty that he doesn't have it <laughs> how do those grapes taste though <laughs> oh wait but, you can't have apples them. apples are shit Everyone hates them. Everyone knows apples are shit. They've been shit for all forever. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. I'll play Doom. So, Super Smash Brothers. We got every single character that has ever been in the Super Smash Brothers ever. And you don't get to play any of them. And they're you all don't locked. get to play fucking any of them. So yeah, uh, <laughs> you, you know, you start you know with, uh, okay, this this is controversial, uh -huh. but I almost feel like so. I know that people are already upset about having to unlock everybody, uh -huh. but I almost feel like the stages should be locked too if you don't have that fighter. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't know, cause it's like, what am I doing in Castlevania Town? <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay and you don't have fucking it's simon like i don't have a, simon or richter or anyone involved and i'm like i'm confused right now <laughs> yeah all right um <clears throat> that makes sense kind of but also fuck you no eh. you already have to unlock the music <laughs> not all of the music there's a there's a pretty significant that's amount true. of music that's um, unlocked. but speaking of the music one thing that i really do like is that um in a lot of the a lot of the stages have like different options for tracks. Just since there's so much music in the game, like for example, the the wrestling stage has a chance to play like Punch Out's theme, or it can play the the music from Incineroar's reveal trailer. Like a bunch of Pokemon music is available in that stage. You can play a masked DDD's theme. Like like it it just has a bunch of different options that fit thematically with the stage even if it's not from that game which i think is really cool i'm going to be um, mad if i don't get the pokemon theme at the pokemon stadium though that's required i mean sure but which one there's like 40 of them in the game required elite 4 i don't know okay <laughs> that yeah that's fair <laughs> um so yeah, so why don't we talk about World of Light real quick? Because I haven't really engaged with any of the online play or like normal Smash. I don't. Um, I well, I've played some of the normal Smash, but I don't have the online pass yet. Cause yeah, I had enough for Smash, and that's it. And next week right. I'll probably pick up the Fighter Pass, and uh, and uh, you know the yeah. The I'm just. Pr I'm probably just gonna whatever. wait for the Fighter Pass until the fighters come out. I don't see any reason to pay for it now. 
Uh, I mean, I don't. I know that I'm gonna buy it. I'd rather yeah, just get also, it out of the way. Yeah, there's also no reason not. Plus, to you get um a costume or something. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, right. Not um, that that matters that much, but. So, so World of Light is primarily primarily what I've been playing. Spirit mode. Um, I really, really like spirit mode. It's super fun to like run around and collect different spirits, which. Like, we talked about this when they did the last Smash Direct, but essentially what the spirits are is, like, they're little stat boosters for your character, and you can equip them in all kinds of different combinations and stuff, and then um, as you go through World of Light, you'll come up against different spirits that, are that like, fit thematically with what they are supposed to represent. Like, the spirit that I was fighting, for example, was uh, Dr. Light from Mega Man, and uh, he was just Dr. Mario with a reskin, and Mega Man was also there fighting you, and Dr. Mario tried to run away while Mega Man fought you. So, like, like they just have build these thematic fights, which are really fun. Um, I remember a long, long time ago, I used to, like, set up fights like that in Melee to, like, represent other things. Like, they, there was, like, I think GameFAQs forums or something, and they would post, like... Oh, if you put together Roy and Marth and color them this color and blah, 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 it'll be like fighting these people from this other Fire Emblem game. So so using special rule sets like that to create a unique fight is, is really cool. I like yeah, that. Yeah, plus there's All like... Those other people in the Fire Emblem games are in the game now. Yeah! Plus there's like dozens and dozens and dozens of uh, different, like, challenges in that in that World of Light mode, which is really cool. Um, yeah, and they're broken up by different uh, difficulty stars, and so yeah, I don't know. There's only been like one that I completely have not been able to beat at all. <laughs> yeah, there are a couple that I've been stuck on, but um, I think that one of the reasons is because my stats aren't good enough, or I don't have the right spirits to like cancel out some of the effects. Like I really like that. It's it feels very RPG like, you know, going around the map and collecting spirits, making them stronger. And it's kind of nicer to have a challenge mode that is more than a list of challenges because I haven't mm -hmm. played I haven't played a Super Smash Brothers for any extended period of time since Melee. Yeah. And one of my favorite things in Melee was the challenge list of which there was like a hundred different challenges or something. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and this is, but like if you got stuck on one, you just had to keep playing it until you beat it, and then yeah. before you, it would yep. unlock the next set. So. Whereas in this one, you can kind of uh, go in different paths and stuff. Yeah. Um, another like thing you can do is, I like this, the spirit board. It'll, it'll like randomly generate spirits for you to fight, which are just also randomly generated challenges. I just haven't even done that. you can get some that. really powerful, really powerful spirits with that one. That was the only way I could get through a little bit of World of Light was by going and finding something really strong in the board. Well, I haven't done that just because... I don't really care about the spirit so much as unlocking fighters through it. Right. So, <laughs> I mean, it's not like that's all I care about exactly, because if I really cared about that and that's it, then I would just do the, like, one stock um, versus battle a million times until I unlocked everyone, but... It's actually based on how far <coughs> you move in-game. <laughs> that's funny. Well, yeah. that's probably good for me because uh, I play characters like Sheik and Lucario and run back and forth yeah. on the stage a lot. So, yeah. Um, also, if you want, you can play classic mode, and playing classic mode with particular characters will unlock particular characters. So, like, if you have a specific character you want, you play classic mode with another character to get that one. That yeah, but sense. even then, like the what I. <laughs> What I want, where I want to unlock the characters most of the time is in World of Light, so... Right, and unlocking them as, like, a regular Smash fighter doesn't unlock them for World of Light, so... Right, Very so, like, for instance, one of the characters I wanted to play, and I still want to play in World of Light, is Pikachu, but I don't know where Pikachu is on the board. Yeah, same, I want to play Bayonetta, because Bayonetta is, like, my favorite Smash character ever, and... Uh, I heard from a friend who is 100% in World of Light because he has absolutely no life uh, that Bayonetta is literally the very last character that you can unlock. So, like... <laughs> well, I don't know. <clears throat> Be careful with spoilers, I guess, but... Uh, right, sure. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I would... 
But, you know, Pikachu is one of the characters that comes unlocked in Versus. <laughs> so, yeah, like, exactly. it, you would expect him to be close to the beginning somewhere. <laughs> yeah, early on, right? <laughs> but I still haven't found him. Um, and I've even beaten one of, like, the big bosses. So I've played a, a pretty significant amount. I just have probably gone the opposite direction or something that I need to yeah. go to get him. Yeah. I'm in, like, this little power plant area, and I haven't seen any fighters there, so I don't think that's where Pikachu is. It's, I don't know. It's weird. <clears throat> uh, the power plant area. Did you go through like a, a po like a portal to get there, or did you? It's like a portal, yeah. Okay, I went through the fire portal one, and there was a couple fighters in there, so I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, this uh, this power plant area. It's also really interesting. Like, like that brings up a good point about the World of Light map is that even the map has like little puzzles for you to solve. Like in the power plant area I'm in, I have to like bring spark plugs between different uh spots to like build bridges except you only have a certain number of spark plugs so you have to figure out where to put them so that you can get the right path while without running out of the plugs it's, oh that's kind of interesting really nifty. yeah yeah in the in the fire area <laughs> it's basically uh bowser's castle so there's pow blocks and that's it but uh, oh yeah <laughs> so it's not very complicated but yeah and that so like world of light just has this great design i think that they kind of really doubled down on the idea that this is like a collection of just a video game like like you you're in bowser's castle i'm pretty sure what I, the power plant that i'm in is supposed to be like the power plant from pokemon yellow or whatever right. so like like just a bunch of iconic areas mashed together in this world i wonder if light. you're gonna come across a ridley that's yellow skinned <clears throat> and it's gonna be zapdos i'm sure i will <laughs> <laughs> that's not a spoiler i don't actually know if that's the case but yeah <laughs> um actually what i was doing was i was double backing um backtracking a little bit and going to areas where i know there's fighters to unlock right um so i i just unlocked captain falcon on a little racetrack area oh yeah so i don't know i'm kind of a. Uh kind of skipping fighters that i don't want like i had i had lucas at one at one place and i was like i don't even want this guy i'm just not gonna fight him <laughs> well i'll i mean I, there's ones i definitely don't care about but i'll fight them if they're i i see them there because it's like yeah at the very least it'll open it in the main roster will it unlocking them through world of light yeah everyone you unlock I... in world of light is unlocked mm. in versus hmm. so that's actually one of the best reasons to do world of light Interesting. Because it does unlock it for the roster. So I would, like, at the very least, I would attempt it. Because a lot of times, the fighter battles can be difficult depending on where they are in the <clears throat> in the map. But for the mm. most part, they're not that difficult. Not any more difficult than fighting them normal. Right. So I think the, makes... the most trouble I've had with any of them, other than Bowser, which was kind of DPS-gated... <laughs> Um, on, yeah. based on the stickers was uh, actually Peach. I had the most trouble with Peach because um, I don't know. I think the stage wasn't great <laughs> huh. for who I played, and um, or maybe it wasn't bad for who I was playing, but it was more like I didn't like the stage personally, so it made right. it a little annoying. But um, also, Peach was hard for whatever reason. I I I don't know. In, in fucking Peach has NPC, always been good, though. Yeah, so. NPC peaches seem really good. Um, I think the <laughs> last character I unlocked was me, Sword Fighter. That's like the most I don't care about this character character I've ever played. But <laughs> you unlocked me, Sword Fighter. That's ridiculous. Yeah, you don't have access to the other two at the start of the game. Or, the other th or any of them, actually, but I, I don't have access to the other two. I only have access to Sword Fighter right now. I think you might be able to, like, custom create them still, but they're not in your fight roster until you unlock them, I oh. guess. Unless I'm wrong, which I guess I could be, but I don't think they are. Um, yeah, I so I like the, the sticker combination thing and how the kind of RPG aspect of it. The only thing I don't like about it is that... Um, you can get DPS gated by things, and there are situations where, like, you just need a really good sticker set to win. And then there's other ones where it's like, I'm completely just demolishing these people, and it's probably because my stickers are way higher level than them. <laughs> so. Yeah, some of them are really, really easy. 
Yeah. And some of them, like, you'll hit them 10 times and have stacked up, like, 4% damage. Because, like I said, I went back to, or I doubled back a little bit to unlock some characters in an alternate starting area, essentially. Because after mm -hmm. you get far enough in, it lets you go back and get the ones that you were gated off of in the beginning. Um, so I doubled back, and it's like, now I'm fighting level 1 stickers again. And it's like, I have a, like a 10,000 power Mega Groudon <laughs> sticker. And mm -hmm. it's just like, if I use that, I just, it's not even a challenge, which kind of sucks. Right. But I mean, I guess I can level up some of my little stickers, but alternate st stickers that I'm sort of interested in. But I don't, I don't know. It just seems weird. Um, right. And I also, so I haven't played a ton of it, but um, I kind of miss the adventure mode in Brawl because it was more like a side-scrolling kind of platformer game, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. So I kind of miss that a little bit um, because while, while World of Light is really fun and I really enjoy it, um, and it actually helps prepare you a little bit for playing the video game, um, the I do kind of I never really got to because I, I, I never had a Wii, so I was never able to actually play the Brawl campaign. So I kind of miss that they don't have that or or mm. something like it. Um, I don't know. Maybe someday that we'll get a virtual console for the Wii, but like, I I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Brawl feels like it's too recent for it to have a virtual console, especially since they released Smash Ultimate. Like, I, I don't know. Have they ever released a Smash game on Virtual Console? No, because the... F well, I guess the Nintendo 64 was the first Smash, but, like, the one that everyone would care would have cared about is the GameCube one. Yeah. And they have they don't have a GameCube uh, Virtual Console. <laughs> people want... Uh, the part, part of why people are, like, really wanting a Virtual Console <laughs> right now is because they anticipate it being the GameCube Virtual Console. Yeah. Um... That being said, I could see them doing the Wii Virtual Console as well. There's no reason... I mean, you know, they have to do port work, but, like, once you have some of that down, there's no reason not to release Wii games on the Switch because the Switch has all of the, the capabilities of the Motion Plus yeah. built into the Joy-Cons, so they might as well do it. Uh, right. There are definitely a few Wii games that I would really <laughs> love to play again. Um because I didn't own one, but I had a friend who had one, so I usually played his stuff. But yeah, uh, yeah. I would really like to play like um, Resident Evil Umbrella Chronicles, which was like a light gun game. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. Um, like say what you will about Resident Evil, but it was a very fun light gun game. <laughs> um, sure, yeah. And uh, and yeah, like like I said, Brawl, and even some <clears throat> other ones that um, I kind of missed just because I never played it, like, uh, Mario Galaxy would mm -hmm. be nice to go back and play. Uh, so, yeah, I, don't, I don't know. Since you like Mario Odyssey so much, right? Well, I probably like it less than most people, <laughs> and I have not finished it. So Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I actually, but um, I just don't finish video games, so. Playing Super Smash Brothers actually kind of makes me want to go back and play <laughs> Mario and Zelda again. <laughs> mm-hmm. And even like actually using your switch, right? Yeah, and even playing um Sheik. Part of the reason why I was really enjoying playing Sheik was because I played that uh that Dynasty Warriors or Hyrule Ultimate Warriors or whatever. Right. <laughs> and my favorite character in that game was Sheik. So like um it I don't know, it made me want to play it some more, but I don't know. Right. Although the Sheik, the Sheik in, in uh, Smash Ultimate is quite a bit different from the Sheik in that game, but uh, <clears throat> in that like Sheik in Brawl or in Ultimate is a very, very much a like melee focused fighter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really have like her. She has skills, but they're not that great. <laughs> right. Um. You know, or I might. I don't know. Maybe I'm just bad, but. Uh, like, 
the way that Sheik operated in in that Hyrule Warriors was actually more like Zelda operates in Brawl, which is kind of or in Ultimate, which is kind of funny. Yeah, I mean they are the same person. Spoilers for Ocarina of Time. Sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we're at also Darth Vader I mean, is Luke's father, which is another game that I um should probably go back and finish. Uh. Because I've Ocarina been playing, I, yeah, Ocarina of Time. I was, I've sort of every now and then playing that on the 3DS still. So good. Uh, I have a lot of incomplete games. Yeah, technically, I've not. Too, technically, I've not actually even beat um the new Zelda either. Mm -hmm. But I've I've put a ton of time into it. I just haven't fought Gan Ganondorf, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I'm I'm really excited in in Smash Ultimate to unlock some of the like newer characters. I was about to unlock King K. Rule, but he beat the ever living piss out of me by countering me by slapping me with his fat ass. Yeah. So like seriously, like he just got super armor. I dealt a whole shit ton of damage to him, and then he like Falcon punched me out of existence with his gut. It I was, don't remember it, like, if I don't ridiculous. remember if I said this on the podcast or off the podcast but i i have been i have fought pit like five times <laughs> no you said that before we started yeah i fought pit five times or something and i he keeps kicking my ass um it is kind of a jackass so <laughs> i don't really like his stage that much either mm -hmm. um because it has those platforms that you can't jump through unless you break them first which is kind of annoying mm -hmm. um and also i've uh rocketed myself off the cliff as lucario quite a bit <laughs> so, yeah. you know maybe you, fight pit with somebody else <laughs> well that's the thing i'll leave world of light and the last p character i played was lucario right so it puts me up against uh i got pit lucky enough lucario to fight again. him with uh with villager the way i actually killed him was by grabbing one of his arrows and throwing it back at him <laughs> <laughs> that is my favorite thing about villager grabbing projectiles out of the air like that is such a fucking cool mechanic the uh well actually the, probably the character i would want to fight him as probably would be lucario anyway right because i don't know yes i um accidentally shoot myself off cliffs as lucario quite a bit but i'm probably <clears throat> like he's he's probably my favorite character so far that i've played right um and that's, what was the last Smash game that you played? Was it Brawl or... I mean, like... technically I played Brawl, and technically I played the 3DS um, 4 mm -hmm. Smash, but I didn't play either of those to any real extent. So the last one that I actually had and played a lot was Melee. So... Right, so, so a lot of the characters are relatively new for you. Most of the characters, I would say. Um, that's pretty... Probably that's pretty the... Uh, <laughs> The characters I liked the most in old Smash were probably like uh Sheik still. Um mm -hmm. I guess I did like Kirby a little bit and Pikachu were Everybody probably my favorite. Yeah, I've played the shit out of Kirby, man. That was a yeah, bastard. Yeah, I, I I played just a f met I played a fuck ton of Roy, oh, Jigglypuff. And I played a fuck ton of Samus. I played a lot of um, Jigglypuff as well. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, and Jigglypuff Bowser. I liked Bowser actually... a lot too. Dude they made Jigglypuff NPCs fucking insane in this one. I had a Jigglypuff NPC use rollout on me, knock me back, and then dodge to where I was going to land and rest me into oblivion. Like, I can't believe that the Jigglypuff NPCs are able to effectively use rest. That is insane. That ability is really good. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um, But I don't know. I, I, th I think the reason why I like Kirby is because he's easy to play. Not necessarily because I think I'm good at him or anything. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I was um, a down B Kirby back in the day. Like I said, I was a fucking bastard. <laughs> well, yeah, that's like his best skill, basically. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. I really like. I really like the Smash. This is probably. I actually like this better than Melee. I think at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, I like so I said. So who would you? What? So you, you, you said your favorite character so far is probably Lucario? Yeah. Okay. Character I've Who never was your before. favorite character in the Bash games you've played, Phil? 
Um. Oh, that's or, really or tough. Some of I uh like I I don't remember when it was, but I like picked up melee like a while ago, mm -hmm. and I started playing Zelda, and I really like Zelda and Sheik, but mostly I played as Samus because. Uh, yeah, I high five. Yeah, <laughs> I did play a little bit of uh brawl. Like I was able to get through the campaign. I didn't play very much of it, but I played like a little bit of it. Um. So yeah. Uh. Yeah. Probably Samus. Honestly. Okay, well, cool. As of Brawl, they separated Zelda and, and Sheik. Yeah. Right away, so. mm -hmm. They made um, them, honestly, I think they made them both better for it because both of them have pretty good down B attacks. Well, except, Zelda's down B is like the only good part about her, though. So Yeah, except Zelda's, like, <clears throat> they separated those two characters and it turned Sheik from being like sort of a middling character, Sheik slash Zelda being like an upper to mid, mid tier character. To Sheik being one of the best characters and Zelda being one of the worst characters, if not the worst in in, in no, not the worst. That's still Yoshi. So, <laughs> no, I don't. Damn. I don't think so. I think it was someone else. It's Yoshi. But I don't think it was Yoshi. I think it's Pichu. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's always Pichu. Oh, okay, yeah, right, Pichu. I think Pichu, Pichu. is the eternally the worst character in the game. Yeah, that's because Pichu fucking hurts himself when he uses attacks. Although, but I guess oh, I fuck, guess he I wasn't remember in. that. Yeah, I guess he wasn't in some of them though. Yeah, yeah. He's in fact this is the first time he's been in the game since Melee. So I think yeah. Pichu is like the Dan of Super Smash Brothers. He is. Oh, funny enough, I got a Dan spirit. Do you know what it does? <laughs> what? It starts you out at 30% damage. That's all it does. That's the only thing it does. Just makes you worse. <laughs> yeah. Well, that can be paired with some good things, though. And usually, don't you get an extra slot if it has a negative effect? <laughs> uh, yes, but Dan doesn't. It, it could be That's good funny. for Lucario. <laughs> well, there, yeah, there are a few, like characters that it might be good for and there's other mm. spirits that you can pair it with that takes advantage of having damage but right i got i got a sticker that was like do extra damage at zero percent i'm like yeah that's never gonna happen you're you're like maybe okay maybe for the first hit if i'm lucky <laughs> not even not even probably to to be honest <laughs> um funny. yeah i don't know i feel like this is the first i i what I really like about Adventure Mode is it makes me f actually learn how feel to play like the game. Feel like I'm Spider-Man. <laughs> Whatever. It makes me actually feel like I'm I'm learning the game and have some, you know, purpose behind actually trying to to practice. Yeah. Whereas like in past, I like I can't just play against computers endlessly forever because I yeah, just get too bored. bored. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So but having the this with all... lets you play against computers endlessly with special rules and stuff while yeah. you're still, yeah, and and special rules that force you to play in ways that you might not have played in other ways, mm -hmm. and use yeah, characters like... that you might not necessarily have used. Right, like the floor is lava. Like you, you have to get good at doing air combat for that. So like, or at least. Or at least, or at least doing that. combat on platforms, mm -hmm. which is its own challenge too. Yeah, yeah, and like, um, because it it starts as a limited roster and you unlock as you go. Like, I had to play a lot of Sheik, and Sheik's kind of a weird character because you have to use your your melee attacks more than your specials. I would say right. for her, because yeah, for sure. Because you can't really combo mm -hmm. off of her side Bs at all. It what just... is Sheik's side B? I forget. It's she like throws a little... grenade that does damage. Right. It sucks Doesn't people it suck up people and do in? damage. Yeah. Yeah, so you it, can... not really, though. You can kind of combo off it by displacing them, but you have to use your A attacks to combo with it. Yeah, so. it's not really strong, but what it's mostly mm -hmm. useful for is you can throw down extra damage while you're melee attacking them using your, mm -hmm. like, neutral, your neutral A or whatever right but but yeah like it it helps you facilitate um doing more damage her right. down b See? is like a reflect kick that if it hits you bounce back but it's useful for repositioning more than anything else yeah um so there's there there are actually quite a few characters that are like that it's it's not really exclusive to Sheik, and that was something i basically never understood until i played smash 4 right so like 
in, in melee, they had this mode that was um, A attacks only. It, it disabled everybody's B attack, right? And I was like, that's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. The B attacks are the only useful attacks. But really, if I had played that mode in melee a lot, I probably would have more understood better the differences between like everybody's right. a attacks I, I at this point i use a more than i use b attacks i wouldn't characters. say that but dev like it really depends who i'm playing um <sighs> yeah and also that's not counting smash attacks because using the stick or whatever for smash attacks is mm -hmm. usually how i do it uh, although i run a lot too so i mean sometimes i'll do it kind of on accident but but yeah, yeah like i i don't know um i like but having to play it's Sheik so, so much really forced me to play that way, and right. I probably am in better shape for doing that than picking someone like Marth, who would have forced me to like use charge attacks, or, or mm -hmm. basically B attacks anyway, so I don't know. Yeah. Marth's side B is essentially a combo of A attacks, really, so... Yeah. <clears throat> um. I, I really need to get better at shielding, though, because... <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I basically never use shield shields, even though I know I should. But I feel like yeah, it that was up me really during slow. melee, though. Um, you should practice with dodging instead, because if you if you start practicing dodging, you'll kind of just get used to hitting that button, and then shielding will just kind of come. After well, that. I feel like it doesn't trigger fast <laughs> enough a lot of the time. What the dodge? Yeah. Well, well, yeah. Either of them, the shield or the dodge. So right. Because you have to be like not doing anything else and be on the ground i believe well dodge you can air dodge but but i don't think you can air shield right yeah you can air dodge but not air shield right you used to be able to air dodge infinitely now you can only do it once so that's a big improvement <laughs> yeah um and even normal dodging the more you use it the, the shorter you go and the shorter you're um invulnerable so yeah, which is specifically to stop wave dashing, by the way. <laughs> Good. Yeah. <laughs> um Who are you, who are you mainly playing right now? Uh right now I'm mainly playing Lucario because like I said I've been playing World of Light and he's one of the only characters that I like that I have. Um I also have been playing a lot of Villager because I I basically I basically mained Villager in Smash 4 until Bayonetta came out. Mm. Um, beyond that, I'm probably going to be playing Bayonetta a lot, and I'm really excited to unlock Incineroar as well because he looked pretty cool from what I've seen. Of I him. really want Snake, but oh god, yeah, I forgot Snake was here. <laughs> also, Pokemon Trainer is someone who I want to play. I unlocked Ryu, and I looked at Ryu, and I was like, oh yeah, you deal bonus damage for doing the stupid fucking fighting game inputs on on Ryu, and I'm like. That is the shittiest mechanic in any video game ever. Yeah, it's like I'm playing fighting games. It's like I'm playing Smash because I don't want to play a, a fighting game. Yeah, it's like there if you if you play Ryu and you don't do those inputs, you are literally just gimping yourself. So if you don't play Street Fighter, you may as well not play Ryu, which is the only character in Smash like that. Like I I've never I've I think never it's played cool. Mother Three. I like Lucas, but I've never played Mother Three. <laughs> Well, I think it's cool to exist. I just will never play it. Like, right. I think it's cool for people who do play, like, Street Fighter. Then it's cool that they can play a, or have a Street Fighter-esque experience in, in Smash Brothers, but I don't want to play it, so. <clears throat> right. I don't know. It just I might, I might play busy. Ken just for fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, and not actually do the, the Circle Bs and stuff, but just do normal Bs and... I'll do less damage, but I'll get to be Ken. Yeah, that's true, I guess. My favorite like how... thing about Street Fighter is Shoirukin, so, you know. Yeah, Ken and... Ken and Ryu both have fucking, like, two versions of Shoryuken. It's like their upbeat and their final smash, which is like Omega Shoryuken or something. <laughs> that's kind of disappointing. I feel like uh, Ryu should have just got a bigger Shoirukin. Or not yeah. Shoryuken, um... Uh, Hadoken. no, yeah. It's, yeah, Hadoken. It's, it's, right. They're Hadoken. that's what that's what their final smash is. They have two versions of those. <laughs> oh, does does Ken not get a smash that's a Shoryuken, then? Shoryuken is the upspin one. Right, I haven't seen... It's like, Ken's it's kind of like Captain Falcon, but... 
not a grab. <laughs> <laughs> right. Captain Falcon, I love Captain Falcon too. He's a relatively early unlock in World of Light, depending on which way you go. So, yeah, he wasn't for me because I had to go all the way to the end of one section and then double back. Right. I think he's like the first person after Villager, so because that racetrack is near Villager. <laughs> yeah, if he's not the first one, then he's like one of the first ones. Mm -hmm. Um, I also got. Me sword fighter in that area too, so <laughs> whoop de doo. <laughs> I'm really glad that I went the way that I did and not that way. <clears throat> yeah. Um. So I got Marth now, and I'm going back the other way. Man, I just want to like play more of that though. Like I played mm -hmm. for a couple hours before the podcast, and it was like, okay, I'm gonna play till four. Okay, I'm gonna play till four fifteen. Okay, I'm gonna play till four thirty. <laughs> And then I and I showed up at came here at four thirty. I was like, okay, we need to get ready. <laughs> and I'm sitting there playing faster than like like a dummy. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Huh? Hello. Um, we'll probably talk more about Super Smash, and definitely, certainly in the news because there's some news about it as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. Should we just talk about that here and not talk about it later? Yeah, let's just talk about it now. Let's get. Oh, that I mean, we have up. like a ton of news, so I mean, it's like might as well. Yeah, yeah uh, so in there. during the Game Awards, they announced that um, Joker from Persona <clears throat> 5 is going to be the first character in, in the fighter pass that's unlocked for Super Smash Brothers, which is which just is fucking hilarious to me. Just fucking great, because after that, they can start adding JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Spirits using his color palette. <laughs> I'm sorry, no. But that's really cool because I love Persona as a series. It's weird, though, because while Persona has been on Nintendo consoles before, like... Uh, any Persona, Persona that was 5... not... Any Persona that was not... So the only, the last time a Persona game was on a mm -hmm. Nintendo console, it was like Persona 2, which is not what people think of when they think of Persona. Because yeah, the first usually, Persona yeah. to be... The first persona the to people, be the yeah. modern persona with, with the Pertho yeah with the day schedule and all of that was Persona Three, which was on the PS2 and never on a yeah. Nintendo console. So this is just like weird, <laughs> but mm -hmm. I really hope this means that we get a Persona Five release on Switch because yeah, one it would make sense if they're already doing this right, um, <clears throat> and find maybe we can finally break that like uh, SMT on Nintendo and persona on on playstation yeah. Um, yeah not because i necessarily think that playstation shouldn't get it or whatever but but mainly because i want to be able to play persona portably mm. <laughs> um one of my i had it on the the playstation 3 which was fine it i played a lot of it on on the playstation 3 but what one of the sucky things is i couldn't have it mobile if I had it on the right. PlayStation 4, then I I could do the remote play with my Vita, which is fine, but I would rather play it on the larger Switch screen, and it just, I would probably get through Persona faster if I had it, like, mobile. Mm -hmm. I don't really yeah. pull my, um, my Switch out of my dock hardly ever, but if I had Persona 5 on mobile, I would. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, because exactly. Persona is the perfect game to, like, sit on the couch while something's on TV and, like, be playing the game. Like, Right. So I would I would be really excited for Persona 5 to, to be ported. Like, I, I want really it. want I'm, that I'm, now. I'd be really excited for it to be ported so that I could play it at all. I'm gonna be I, super disappointed if it never gets ported to, to, like, never actually gets ported and this Smash Brothers character is just a weird one-off thing. Like, I, I, I would don't be know. I'm so sure. disappointed. <laughs> I'm sure it will, but at the same time, like, you have people like Snake, like, the last Nintendo console he was on was, like, what? The uh, the NES. Oh, uh, GameCube. The Cube. NES, yeah. No, GameCube. They did, uh... Oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, right, yeah, they, yeah. The, uh, Twin uh, Snakes and 3. Yeah. Twin Snakes yeah. and 3 were on GameCube. Um, 3 isn't actually Solid Snake, but... I see what your point. It, I mean, he's a cl he was the person that Solid Snake was cloned from, so whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's the same yeah. guy. Yeah. Half of Twin he Snake. By snake so. Actually, no. Snake it, at all. Yeah, actually, no. It would be all of all of his recessive genes only. Right. Because Liquid Snake was all of the uh, the other genes. The dominant genes. Do 
Oh yeah. Okay. So they, Liquid they, Snake was all all the the recessive. Solid yeah. Snake was all. I was gonna say. Teams. I was gonna yeah. say. No, wouldn't Liquid look like Big Boss if that was the case? <laughs> well, uh, <clears throat> Solid Snake kind of looks like Big Boss, but yeah. But with darker hair, slightly. Mm. A little bit. But yeah, I don't know. It's weird. So like, it, it could go either way is what I'm saying. Because there have been some Persona games, but there has never been a Persona... There has Persona... never been a Persona game that Joker is in on a Nintendo console. So that's where oh, I'm yeah. getting the hang up from. Unless, unless it's because Persona Q2. Ooh. Uh, which will have persona 5 characters and that, that's going to be on the 3ds so is it going to have persona 4 and 5 or 3 4 and 5 because 3 I feel 4 like you and 5 yeah i was yeah. going to say you can't really exclude any of those because somebody would be pissed that game has like a hundred fucking characters in it now <laughs> good um it came out in november 2018 in japan mm -hmm. oh wow okay and and joker is on the box art but he's like a chibi joker because good, Persona good, Q. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know. Like, um, I feel like I would be very disappointed if the reason why he's there is because of Persona Q and not because of <laughs> Persona Five. Persona but, Five, or, yeah. But we'll see. Yeah, we we will see. Um, but it'll be fun to play him in Smash anyway. Yeah. I wonder what his. I wonder if his uh <laughs> I wonder if his B attack is gonna be shooting a gun. <laughs> I'm betting that his B attacks will probably all be persona attacks and his A attacks will probably be his own. <clears throat> That's my guess. Well I mean that <clears throat> Like he had he would have melee attack with, with A, but mm -hmm. but he like his neutral B might be a gun. Right, okay. And technically, in the way the game works, is he shoots, he has airsoft guns or whatever, but it, in the spirit world, basically the kind of, like, what you see is what you get, kind of, in the spirit world. It, it has to do with belief, and if it looks like a real gun, then people assume it's a real gun. Oh, okay. And, and that's kind of how it works in there, so, like, it would so make sense for it to be, like, a sh a is gun. the justification for a child to own a gun. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. it's because magic. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel like an, a neutral <clears throat> B could be a gun because I don't know what else it would be necessarily. Mm -hmm. And then everything else... Yeah, I don't know. I would be surprised if all he had on, on B was persona attacks because... Oh, we lost uh -oh. the... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Hold up. Uh, oh. My camera's being... Fucky. Okay, well, good. You're still here, at least. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm still um, here, but my camera's just acting in a fool. Hold up. I would almost, like, it would almost make more sense if his smash attacks were, uh, used his, his persona and, uh, I could see that, because, um, Bayonetta's smash attacks are her, like, witch time, oops. not witch time, um, her like some uh, wicked weaves. That's what it's what that's what they're called. Like when Bayonetta does a smash, it, it shoots out the big the big leg. So yeah, yeah. Uh oh, whoa. Now we're having issues. Uh oh, oh you're, you're entirely out of the Skype call. Now. Yeah, you're not. Yeah, in the Skype yeah. Call. I know. I know. I'm not entirely out of the Skype call. I was futzing with my camera. But yeah, hold on. Let me jump back in. See if that works. Does okay. it worked? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so Technical I don't know. Like, difficulties. Yep. I, I really hope his smash is an all out attack where all of his friends come and just beat the fuck oh, out of someone. Oh, it absolutely will like be. That. They already have a smash like that. It's uh, Mega Man's final smash, has every single Mega Man in it. So, like. Right. So, um, like, it definitely will be. <laughs> it would be cool if some of the alternate costumes were different characters i don't know mm -hmm. i don't know if they do stuff like that but um not but like, usually they call them echo fighters now yeah the the one that i can I think know. of in the past is um uh what's it called uh peach and daisy but they actually separated mm -hmm. daisy into another fighter too right now, so 
Yeah. So I, but because I don't know, like there wouldn't need to be any real changes between them. I, mm. Although they could do it, but like I, kind of why? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, Skull yeah, basically is is the same character, but he has a shotgun instead of a handgun. Mm-hmm. And um, I guess On might be different enough because she has a submachine gun and a whip. So, oh, I was thinking you meant like. It could be Joker, you, and hero protagonist. No, I forget those what, characters are different enough. Ca- those characters are protagonist's official name. Uh, I don't remember. Hmm. But protagonist, probably. Right. I I think he was like he has an official name because they made a manga and a and an anime. I think maybe not an anime, definitely a manga though of, of that. Yeah. Um, but I think he might just be listed as protagonist. <clears throat> Um, and technically the character's Joker's name is like Akira, I think is what it is. Right. Um, but they call him Joker, I guess, because that's his like code name. I don't know. Like, I, I don't think any other Persona games had guns that they used on other people. Persona 3, you used a gun on yourself <laughs> and right. but never shot anything else with it. Persona Except 5 is the only the one. the robot where... that had the Gatling guns for hands. Oh, yeah. She, also, yeah, her, her attacks were guns. Yeah, that's true. And but... the dog. No. No? Dog used magic. Oh. It was like a magical the girl. A the dog was like a magical girl. Interesting. It, okay. I, yeah. I don't know. Whatever. Um. I was, but no, I was thinking different characters from Persona Five, not right. Um, I guess they could do Echo Fighters, but I that would be weird to do that as like DLC characters. So I don't know. Mm. I guess that could happen, but or they could we might add, get assist they, trophies or something. Yeah, oh yeah, assist trophies would be pretty cool. I'm sure we'll get assist trophies. In fact, it is a little disappointing though <laughs> that um, because this is not a thing that comes out with launch, it's not going to. There's not going to be any stickers that are in the sticker mode or the yeah, adventure mode. Right. They might add them. They might add them to the spirit board or something. But spirit board does like spirit board or stickers does not seem like something that's hard to add to the game. Yeah, I'm sure they could probably even just add another section like branching off. I had so I haven't finished World of Light, but I would straight Mm -hmm. up buy like World of Light DLC. I would play. I would want. I want. Like I haven't even finished it, but I probably will want more (laughs) when I'm done because it it is really fun. Yeah. They um, have a great opportunity to add, like, tons of value to the fighter packs. Like, right. in the past, they were like, you get a new me costume, which is, like, nifty. You know, it's cosmetics as well as a new fighter and a new stage. So, like, it, it, it stands to reason that they would add new assist trophies or even items and stickers or um, right. spirits. So, before they announced Joker, I was hesitant <clears throat> to get the character pack because I was like, eh, I don't really care about buying characters that I haven't seen yet. But mm-hmm. now that I've seen Joker, I'm like, well, if this is going to be the quality of the, the characters they release, I'm just going to buy them all, because you get a discount if you buy them, like, as a pack, so. Right. So I'm definitely going to do that as soon as I get paid next. Yeah. Yeah, and the, I mean, the Smash 4 character pack was pretty good. They had, like, Bayonetta, Cloud. I think Bayonetta was actually voted for by fans. <laughs> it well, was, it like, makes the... sense, because Nintendo has Bayonetta, so. Yeah. A lot of people voted for Bayonetta because of that, and a lot of people voted for dumb shit like Banjo Kazooie. And Nintendo was like, we "Bayonetta don't. is the best achievable, the yeah, the we... top achievable vote." <laughs> AKA, we don't own Rare anymore, you idiots. Yeah. <laughs> Although, King K rules. King K King rule K... is a uh, is a rare character. King, technically, King K rule is a rare character. However, he is from specifically Donkey Kong Country, which is owned. By Nintendo, the IP. Okay. It's the same reason that, like, they license Donkey Kong to Rare, okay. as opposed to the other way around. All right. <clears throat> I want to play the new Donkey Kong Country. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I didn't want to pay sixty dollars for it. <laughs> Understandable. Um, I think that's all I have to say about Smash. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty good. I think maybe we'll have a little bit more to say about it once, like, you get the online pass. We can play, like, against each other. Or yeah. I have no idea if I'm going to be any good at uh, multiplayer, because in the past I haven't been. Oh, I'm sure you won't. But, uh... Um, Don't worry. 
<laughs> well, no, in the past I haven't been, but I feel like I'm more competent in in Super Smash Brothers now than I may have ever been. <laughs> so, right. Um, just because I have actually been trying to learn how to play through this this adventure mode, so. See, I got pretty good by playing with some of my friends who play, like, real people fighting games. So, like, I, I played with them a lot, and I was like, okay, well, I guess I have to learn how to play now. <laughs> well, I don't... Yeah, the reason why I like Smash better than any other multi... Like, a two-person fighter game or whatever is because this game is more about positioning and mm -hmm. simple inputs rather than combos. Which, it's like, oh, I don't... Yeah. I don't want to sit there and learn the repetition of putting in a button input. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, on, it's... on my stream, I uh, I literally ranted about this for 45 minutes while turning off my brain and playing, playing Path of Exile like an hour ago. Like, it, it, it is exactly, like, word for word, what you just said is everything that I said. Yeah. Like, it's... it's like, because eventually you can get to the point where those button inputs don't matter and you're consistently doing them correctly. Mm -hmm. And then you get to the point where it's actually about the psychology of fighting someone. Yeah, and if um, you're, if the button inputs, if you're so good at the button inputs that they don't matter and you will never ever fuck up, what's the point of having complicated button inputs? Other than you create an artificial skill floor. That's right. the only reason they're there in every single fighting game. Um, yeah. I think they're Smash not, I think actually <clears throat> Fighter, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. I think actually is more simple inputs too, though. Yeah. So actually, all maybe of the I should Dragon try Ball that. games. Budokai has always been good about that, and Dragon Ball Fighter Z is similar to Budokai, right? No, but no, it's more of a traditional fighter game than Budokai was, because with Budokai there there comes a lot of like the three D aspect stuff of it too, kind of like um that Pokémon. Oh yeah, yeah. It has it has like a a. a that style of thing to it too so it's not exactly the same i i would not classify them them as the same kind of game it's more like mortal Kombat or something but without combos it, it has combos but without like large or long input combos anyway right i believe i that that i could be wrong i guess i don't know i'm also really excited for jump force too because that, that game looks fun <laughs> yeah jump force looks pretty cool that one looks like super smash brothers but anime <laughs> mm -hmm. okay i can't wait to see Luffy beat the shit out of goku because it would never happen otherwise <laughs> and the 3d fighter too man there's so many so many good characters they they have yusuke mm -hmm. in it now i'm so pumped oh good <laughs> um let's move on to something else though okay fell what what did you want to talk about <laughs> okay uh, so I saw a movie this week. It was called Blind Spotting, and it was fucking incredible. Uh, this is a movie that I sort of went in expecting it to be like a uh, really, really depressing sort of sad movie about a man who's like, because the synopsis was uh, a man just got off of parole, and essentially he has to uh, spend his like his last three days without getting into any trouble. <laughs> And he sees a uh, cop gun down an innocent man, and that essentially sends his life spiraling downwards. And while this is absolutely what this is about, uh, the movie's fucking hilarious. It's maybe the funniest movie I've seen this year, including Buster Scruggs. Um, <laughs> Buster Scruggs was fucking hilarious. That's a bold oh, yeah. statement. Yeah, it's 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 it is it's a bold ass statement, but I'm 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 making it. Uh, it eventually does reach that horrible, horrible, downward, depressing point, but, uh, like, it, it's, it, it walks there, you know, it makes its way to that point, uh, it, uh, it, it is, it is very much about that, um, it's very much about one specific character who had just gotten off of parole, and his crazy motherfucking friend. And, uh, it's, it's about them, the gentrification of Oakland, and trying to keep everything on the level. It's it's a wonderful movie. Uh, I uh, it, it's it's it, it's oh oh uh what what the fuck was I gonna say? How was I going to say this? You gonna you know, give me a second to let my brain catch up with my mouth? All right. So like on the surface level, the movie is very like approachable and very very like 
the, there is like a story to the movie and this is what the movie is about and there's all of this stuff but on a deeper level uh there is a scene where they talk to this one guy who's like an, an art man who has done a bunch of artistic photographs uh some one of one of his series was this uh photograph about like trees in oakland uh that were superimposed over where houses are to show that like this at one point was all a forest and then there was another one that he points out as like just straight on shots because like there are so many things that you can tell in the eyes mm -hmm. eyes of like photographs of people that are just straight on shots and it like holds on this point where it, where this art man has like the two main characters look at each other in the eyes and then they sort of like blow it off and then throughout the movie there are a bunch of pictures like in photo albums or on advertisements and stuff like that that sort of bring this back and like like the final <clears throat> confrontation in the movie is um uh, happens because of a photograph that the main character sees. There is a lot going on in this movie, but even if you're not like into all of the a lot going on in this movie, it's still an incredibly like really really solid movie <clears throat> that goes uh, from fucking absolutely the floor on your ass hilarious to uh, just sad as hell. It's great. Uh, definitely, I think it. I think I'm putting it like my fifth favorite movie of the year. It's it would it it, it fucking. Uh, I watched this shit on a whim, and it surprised me in every possible way that it could have. I so, love this movie. You showed me the trailer for it, or maybe not. I the showed trailer. you like the first or, scene. Yeah, the very the first opening scene, yeah. and I hated literally every second of it watching that really? entire scene just made me want to lay down and die i could i don't think i could stand watching this movie what is it really? about this movie that makes it funny what there was it was just a bunch of dudes acting gangster and one guy was like oh wait i don't want to act too gangster because uh i got my parole and that was the entire scene and none of it was funny to me so like what is is there other stuff going on than that, or is that just the entire movie? His I friends mean, act gangster, and he doesn't want to because he's on parole. Oh, oh, there is like uh, that. That's essentially the entire movie, but there's like uh, to the point that that's uh, that's the entire movie, but it's like a lot more deep deeper than the surface level of that, right? And yeah, it's it's it is. Uh, sort of like his friends uh, act gangster, but then there are like uh, other scenes where his friend, uh, who is like constantly acting gangster, is like um, uh, trying to sell some fucking shit over. Like, like he'll 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 get into all of these crazy rackets where he tries to like pawn shit off on people. Uh, specifically, there was a great scene in a in the fucking uh, like hairdressing studio where they where it's like goes back and forth with this guy trying to sell like this old uh, hairdressing equipment and then goes directly back to another woman who uh, is, is very like is, is questioning it. And then eventually like it goes back and forth until he eventually gets her. And it's just incredible. It's I, I I'm, I'm kind of surprised you felt that way. I, the first scene was the one that really like it, it fucking killed me. I no, I didn't like great. any of it. I didn't think it was funny. It was just dudes waving guns around and one guy going, no, stop. I mean, the amount of gun, though, to the point where it got ridiculous. Two for each person in the car? Six? Six entire guns? Y yes. And it just continued going to the point where there were, like, guns in the fucking glove box. And there's... I, I'm, I'm surprised. Yeah, I'm I don't know. I'm a little disappointed. But yeah, the, the movie is fucking great. Hmm. I don't know. Comedy is one of those things that, like... Different people have different tastes about what's yeah, funny. I like, don't know, but like I, I, that, I, I, that doesn't sound that funny to me either. But but of course that's the way I'm describing it, and I didn't think it was funny. Yeah. So, so I don't know. So it's like obviously it's not going to sound funny if somebody who doesn't think it's funny is telling you about it. Yeah. Well, I I think people said the <clears throat> same thing about um uh shit. What's the movie called? Uh, the one with uh Jordan Peele. Get out. People get out. people describe that as a dark comedy, and I didn't really think there was. I mean, it was. There were jokes in that. It was funny, as in it like was really weird and awkward situations. But it, I and they did have some jokes, but I I don't. I don't yeah. really classify that as a dark comedy in my mind. That yeah. was an action movie with a couple of jokes, or not action, but like an action horror movie with some jokes in it. 
Yeah, and not even action. It was, it was like a horror movie with some jokes in it. That, that, that doesn't make it a dark comedy. <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah, this one I would absolutely say is a dark comedy because, like, the the first half is, like, almost entirely comedy, and then, like, there are a couple of fucked up things that happen, and then one very specific thing happens, and the tone just completely shifts. Hmm. So, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's just I don't, it things. might be one of those things that I I could probably like appreciate what the movie's doing, but I might just not like it. I don't know. Right. And I only did show you like the first scene. <laughs> yeah. And it, it, it essentially gets better. Uh, what was? Yeah, I'm, I'm what, sure. Oh shit! Better, what was but... one of the lines? Hold on a second. You were saying that, that 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 was what grabbed you, and I just when you showed me that scene, I just was not feeling it. I was like, I I don't understand what grabbed you about this. This looks like every stoner comedy I've seen in the last twenty years. That involves yeah. guns in it. Yeah. Well, the thing is, there's, like, no drugs in this movie. Well, that and... doesn't necessarily mean anything. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I mean, you meant you know, the feel that, more that, that's the kind of the quintessential stoner comedy thing. <laughs> when but, uh... I, sure, but when I say stoner comedy, I don't necessarily... Yeah, you mean, mean like, comedy like, movie made in the Like, remember, uh, remember Up a Creek? That was absolutely a stoner comedy, and I don't think they talked about drugs in that at all, because it was... Oh, to... right, uh, Without a Paddle, I think, is the one you Without mean. a Paddle. movie in the Without fucking a... theaters. It was terrible. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was awful, but that's 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 the type of movie I consider a stoner comedy. It yeah, 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 that, that, that sort of... Of uh, like like that type, type of, of humor, terrible exactly. humor, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, come on, hold up, hold up. You stop being a fucking asshole for like three seconds. Thank you. Oh yeah, uh, th there it is. There's one one of my favorite lines. I sent this to Megan. It's like, what are you not gonna like leave a statement? Oh yeah, uh, hello police. I'd like to report a murder you did. Yeah, I was out after curfew. Yeah, I'm a convicted felon. Back to jail. Yeah, tomorrow works for me. What time? <laughs> okay, that's kind of funny, but uh, but yeah, yeah. yeah uh, blind spotting is fucking incredible. Uh, I would recommend it to everyone. Okay. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about is uh, I made a I made a little bit of a video on it, uh, and it was sort of a joke <laughs> in the video, but uh, Katamari is still really good, and yeah. it's fun as hell to play. Is it the okay now? Yeah. Now this is. We could talk all day about how great Katamari was 15 yeah. years ago, but is yeah. this game the exact same game as Katamari Damacy, yes. or is there new it's, content? It's, uh, it is, is there a any... port of Katamari Damacy. It's the exact same okay. one. Okay. Yeah. That, so yeah, that being I, said, I, like that—that that is not a game I would expect to age poorly. That probably yeah, is oh, a no. game that will live. That's a game forever. that will live forever. Yeah. yeah. The only thing but, is, um, I really wish they had put katamari one and two together because yeah same two was my favorite category or we love yeah, katamari was my favorite one yeah I, I i completely agree i also loved we love katamari but picking this game up uh i i, I started playing it like you know with the intention of making the uh, video that i was going to make and i was just like oh yeah that's right katamari is fucking incredible and i love playing it and it's so much fun so yeah, that that's pretty much what my feelings are. If you've uh, thought about playing Katamari before and haven't, just pick it up on the PC. If you uh, want to play Katamari again, you can pick it up you know, on the PC. If you never heard of Katamari, you can pick it up on the PC. Basically, the entire gamut of the humans that sort of exist on the planet Earth right now, you can pick it up on the PC. You go play Katamari. That's Katamari's about all I got great. to say about that. We love Katamari. Yeah, we love Katamari, which unfortunately is not is not there, but maybe it will be. <laughs> Especially if this one sells good, so go buy it. Yeah, go buy it. <laughs> I, so there were a, a handful of other ports, and I'm not sure which one was the one that had... I feel like one of them had Katamari 1 and 2 on it, but I can't figure out which one it was, because there was a Katamari Forever on the PS3, mm -hmm. and there was also a beautiful Katamari on the 360, and I'm not sure which one... Or, or if either of them were actually ports of the first two, like I thought that I remember. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. You know. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I... Oh. Oh, you know what? Uh, oh, no. That, never mind. There's also one that's Katamari Forever, which has, like, a couple mm -hmm. worlds from a bunch of different ones. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Uh, is that it, though? Yep, that's it. Okay, I'm gonna talk about uh the crimes of Grindelwald for the oh, Harry yeah, the... Potter one. Yeah. Who? Uh. Grim Grimwald. 
I don't remember how. He's, this... uh, he's Johnny Depp, but he's also uh, Colin Farrell. Grindelwald. Grindelwald. I didn't. Okay, okay I had to like. <clears throat> they never really say his name. Actually, they say his name a, a bunch of times, but I don't remember exactly how it is. But anyway, oh, I, saw, I saw the first one. He was like the weirdest fucking side plot that was. Uh... Like he was a twist that well, was revealed in the beginning. Of he the was movie. the he was the main villain of that movie. People just didn't know it was him. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing. The twist was like revealed immediately upon like like a <laughs> scene with a scene transition in the beginning of the movie. It was the worst shit. I thought that that was gonna be like a oh this guy might be Windwall, but he's actually not. No, he just actually did that. Oh that well, I don't bad. think anybody really knew or cared. Unless they actually were deep into Harry Potter lore anyway, though. So, well, here's so I the think thing. for general uh, audiences, it doesn't really matter. What, what what it was, though, because I'm not in deep into Harry Potter lore either. What it was, was like, there were like a bunch of like, uh, it was like fucking newspapers or something. They were like showing like, uh, Gugs, Grindelwald has uh, fucking escaped. They tried to get him and they like showed his face, right? And he had like this specific <laughs> hair. And then it sort of faded in to Colin Farrell's character who had the exact same hair. Like like specifically so that like 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 to point out that they were the same character. It was terrible. Well Absolutely I, awful. Well I mean if if that's what it was then I don't wouldn't call it a twist then, but Yeah. A anyway. Well uh the thing is is it sort of it like that was the one thing that revealed it and then like the movie treated it as a twist. Eh. What whatever the case, I don't really want to talk about the first one because that one was actually a movie <laughs> oh no so oh no i was okay so i was watching this movie and this <clears throat> movie has like a 40 or something on rotten tomatoes like so i wasn't oh, yeah. expecting it to be that good um and right. i wasn't even really expecting to talk about it but having seen it i kind of want to talk about it now <laughs> mm -hmm. uh five minutes before the end of the movie i was like i don't see what everyone's saying this movie is that bad like it doesn't it seems fine and then the movie mm -hmm. ended, ended, and I was like, that was the end of the movie? <laughs> <laughs> it had basically no climax. Um, it had a, like, sort of climactic event, but it was, like... <clears throat> it was, like, the first third of a movie, but two hours long. So, like, even worse than Infinity it. War about that. In Infinity, Infinity War had, War a, had a beginning, it a had middle, a... and an end. Middle, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I completely this movie, agree. Yeah. This movie didn't really have a middle. It had, like, a lot of beginning, and then a lot of... Well, I, it didn't have an end. It had a lot of middle. Um, basically, at the point that the movie ends, uh, I was, like, shocked that it was over. I was like, that's it? <laughs> because... It the the point that it the the like what I guess was treated as the climax of the movie was um not really it, it felt like the, the point where oh the good guys lose at this point and then they have to regroup and then win. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like the, yeah. the the I don't know if it's like three act structure or whatever, but like the part in in the basic plot line of Oh, tons of movies where they have like a a minor defeat and then they have to go and and like actually win later like right. but it was without any of that <laughs> um jesus it, it was so weird and it's like the i i don't think i've ever seen a movie where the main character had like the least amount of agency of, of everyone <laughs> it felt like Throughout the entire movie, uh, that Newt character never That's made stubborn. any decisions. Um, never like ad like never chose to do anything. Never advanced the plot in any way. It was like he just was going places and things were happening around him. It's like he had the best and worst luck simultaneously throughout the whole movie, and he never. I think he never affected the plot. It's like. The only things that affected the pot were were circumstantial because he was there. Like, there's one part where they get trapped in like a cage, and one of his his pet animals unlocks the cage for him. And it's like, at no point did Newt go, "Hey, unlock this cage." Hey, like 
I don't worry, I have it. it you know, there's a plan. It's like, no, the cage just unlocked. He didn't do anything. <laughs> he was just standing there, and one of his pets just happened to do it for him. Um, I remember you telling somebody at one point about like like they they wanted to write a story but they had no idea what they wanted to do and you you told them like you can't just the story has to have a, a structure to it you can't just write a story without knowing what's going to happen about some guy going places and doing stuff and from what you're describing that sounds like exactly what jk rowling did yeah i don't i don't even know it's like so I'm just going to go through like the basic outline of what happened in the entire movie because I don't I don't think anyone should watch it first of all. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> maybe if the third one is like good then maybe you'll want to know what happened. So mm -hmm. maybe watch it later, but at this point there's no reason to see it. <laughs> right. So, the beginning of the movie um they reveal that Dumbledore told Newt to do all the shit that he did in the first movie. Mm -hmm. Um and then he wants him to do more stuff. And Newt's like, I don't want to do that stuff. So then he goes home. <laughs> and then, uh, oh. and then, um, like the characters, the two like side characters from the first movie came back. The the human guy who was not a magic or a, a beige guy, he had his <laughs> memories. Like, there's a justification for why he had his memories again. And then that that witch Queenie who is there and like there too. Um, yeah. They show up at his house and say, hey, your girlfriend from the first movie is in Paris. And he was like, man, I just got back from telling Dumbledore I can't go anywhere because I'm not allowed to leave the country. Let's go to Paris. So they go to <laughs> Paris, not really because he wants to, but because his friend is like, we're going to Paris. And he's like, I guess we're going to Paris. So he goes and he to only has three days left on his magic parole. <laughs> yeah, I guess. So he goes to Paris. Um, <clears throat> while there, he like tracks down his girlfriend, and it's like that's the only point where he's actually doing things. Um, really early on in the movie. Uh, then they go down this side plot that has nothing to do with Grindelwald at all. Um, okay. Where he's finding the woman, and then they like they're trying to figure out about this kid Credence who was from the first movie as well. Um, about where he comes from and stuff and so they it's like they're doing all of this stuff like they, their their plot line is going one direction and the overarching <clears throat> plot like with grindelwald doing bad things and stuff um they just happen to be in the same place <clears throat> at the end of the movie like it wasn't like they were oh we need to get credence so that we can stop grindelwald from having his master secret plan it was like no they just were trying to figure out like newt was just trying to find the girl the girl was trying to find out wh what the deal with credence was and then they ended up at the end where they just happened to be in the the secret place where uh grindelwald was revealing his evil plot to everyone um i will say this about the movie though you might expect Johnny Depp's character oh, to have some of some of the worst justifications ever. But the reason why Grindelwald is doing all of the evil shit he's doing <clears throat> makes the most sense I've ever heard of a villain's justification to do anything. Well, that's good. Like, I... You know, if... Good villains, a mark of a good villain is someone who has conviction in what they're doing and, and has some sort of idea of why they're doing it and why they're not the bad guy. The best bad guys don't think they're bad guys. This movie gives a very compelling reason for why Grindelwald's doing the an shit even, he's doing. An even better bad guy is a bad guy where the audience can't even really, it finds it hard to believe they're a bad guy. Yeah, like... It, it it's to the extent where I was sitting there going, man, if he wasn't planning to put all <laughs> of no like non magics or muggles or whatever, however you want to say it, muggles, yeah. If, if it, his plan wasn't to basically subjugate the human population, then his like he, I would totally be with him. <laughs> you know what <laughs> I mean? Like yeah, I don't know. Um. 
I don't know. Did, should I spoil it? It's it's kind of. I don't care. I'm yeah, never gonna I, watch I, another I, Harry I Potter movie or read another Harry Potter book okay. as long as I live. So yeah, and this this was not that great of a movie. Like this is the kind yeah. of movie that I would say read a if you're wanting to see the third one or the next one, read a plot outline of it to see what what the characters did, and then just see the next movie. <clears throat> like this is not worth watching. Um, mm-hmm. the reason why he's fucking with fucking people up is not because he cares about pure-blooded mages or, or, or i don't know magicians or whatever it has nothing to do with that which is witches and wizards he, he doesn't yeah. care about any of that shit um the reason why he cares so much about subjugating <laughs> muggles is because this movie takes place between world war one and world war two and there's a prophecy of world war two happening so he shows oh. she he shows a big like um I, I don't know vision or whatever of like Paris being completely destroyed uh people like straight up killing each other in in like warfare people being led to concentration camps and the fucking atomic bomb so, so he <laughs> wants he wants to stop world war ii is yes. what you're telling me yes that is why he that is like, a very good justification he's like for we doing. have to stop these humans from fucking everything up <laughs> so so what you're saying is he wants to stop hitler from coming to power by putting all of one group of people in a bunch of concentration camps kind of <laughs> so so it's like you know if if it he's wasn't justification but he's basically just doing world war ii anyway if he it, well it's not his plan isn't to just outright murder everyone it's basically to reveal wizards and witches to the world and basically control people at okay. all, not not quite as livestock but basically take over the world and right. have witches and wizards be visible and in charge of everyone Instead right. of being <clears throat> hidden and in shadows and stuff. So yeah. now I, I forget in Harry Potter you were you were born with magic. You cannot learn it, right? Right. You're born yeah, with right. magic. So essentially they're all sorcerers, not really wizards. Yeah, they just call well, them. Well n- not exactly because it's like they have the potential to do magic, but they need to learn how to do magic. So it's not okay. it's not just like they can do magic. Mm-hmm. It's they have to learn how to do magic, but they have They're the potential for with magic. the force, but they need to uh, they learn can, to they control can. it. Right. Yeah. So they 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 have to they still have to study magic, but somebody who was non magical to begin with could not learn to do magic through study. Right. So <clears throat> so there was this kind of you know that when they're at the like big auditorium where he's telling everybody about the the secret plan or whatever or why he's his justification or really he's revealing mm-hmm. that um there's a bunch of like aurors <laughs> which are like the magic cops who mm-hmm. show up and then they start fighting and then there's like a thing where he just murders a bunch of people um right. so like one of the linchpins of this whole movie is that <laughs> and how it ties to the rest of of harry potter right um dumbledore wants newt to do stuff because dumbledore can't fight um grindelwald directly because when they were younger they made this blood pack that they would never attack each other and it's like so essentially it's just still continuing on with the plot line that dumbledore is a manipulative evil asshole actually well no he's not always portrayed as a good guy he I mean, it it definitely makes him out to be more gray than than just good and evil, and mm-hmm. I, and I I think to some extent they reveal that towards the end of the books anyway that he's yeah. kind he's not a hundred percent good or evil he's he's kind of his own thing mm-hmm. more he's good than evil but is essentially what he turned out to be what he essentially turned out to be a manipulative asshole not really like. I wouldn't go that far. He he set things up for Harry, but it wasn't it wasn't out of malice. He was doing it to stop Voldemort, essentially. Sure. But anyway, that that's neither here nor there. Yeah. Like it's because he and and Grindelwald were friends when they were younger, and actually, um, lovers essentially. They they I think I don't know if they explicitly say, but there's like to some extent they're 
they were like gay lovers. That sounds right. Um, and I, I forget how explicit that is, but that is like not that is essentially canon. Um, it might word be it might be word of God or it might be explicit. Yeah. I don't actually remember. But uh, <clears throat> so they have this blood pact, and it's it forms like this piece of jewelry. Um, and throughout the whole movie, like that, he ha- like Grindelwald has this jewelry, and there's a point in time where he's like the person who's freeing him is trying very hard to get make sure that the jewelry like they they get it when they leave and stuff so it's very important and you don't really know why and until it's later revealed that the reason why this jewelry is important is because it's a physical representation of that blood pact um in the final auditorium newt's newt has that thing that animal that um like collects gold stuff and sticks it in its pouch Ah, uh, yes, the Fantastic Beast itself. The yeah. titular Fantastic Beast. <laughs> yeah, so whatever that, that <laughs> creature was. Um, like, and again, Newt did not direct it at all. Or if it did, it happened completely off screen. Um, but he was sitting there staring at, like, watching this this horror vision or of the future or whatever. And then, like, while that was happening, it shows the little hedgehog-looking thing leave his suitcase and then like sneak over and then it was like okay it's obvious that what's going to happen is the the gold thing the gold <clears throat> stealing thing is going to steal the the bobble that's the blood pact and then at the end of the movie lo and behold they reveal yes we had this and it gives it to double door and double door's like cool i'll have to i'll, I'll see what i can do about remo- like reversing those blood pact and Knowing anything about Harry Potter, one of the reasons why Dumbledore is famous in the beginning of the story is because he beats Grindelwald in a duel, a one-on-one duel, and it's like a right. super yeah. pivotal so obviously, event in history. So he definitely, you definitely know he wins. Does something about it, yeah. yeah, yeah. You definitely know that not only does he is he able to reverse this blood pact, but he also wins that duel later on. So right. the next movie is just going to be him winning that duel and whatever leads up to that. But it's mm-hmm. like, it's it's just. Newt as a main Ooh. character feels like he has no control of what what's happening the entire time. Uh-huh. And it's kind of hard to watch because it's like nobody's making any decisions about what they're doing. They're just doing things. <clears throat> things are just happening like... around Newt and it's like f- almost infuriating. That was one of the uh, problems I had with the first one too. I felt like this could have been shared up if uh, like Newt had sort of gone in to America and been like, so you guys are especially racist <laughs> against muggles here, huh? Well, you know, maybe you just need to see them in a different light. Like, you can see my fantastic beasts and where to find them. Look, this fantastic beast is a little bit ugly. But on and here's where you find good. him. And here's where you I find don't know, him. Though. But he didn't I... fucking do anything like that. I, I don't know, I feel, well... I feel like he had more agency in the first one. I feel like so wait, he was is, actually is there for a, a purpose and doing things. Yeah. Is Newt a muggle? Is he a non-magical person? No, no, no he's he is a, a he is a magician. Okay. He got kicked uh, out of school, but can still yeah. use magic. Okay. Which is weird to me because I was under the impression if you get kicked out of school, you weren't allowed to use magic. Oh no, you're probably not allowed to use magic. Because that's what Hagrid did. Yeah. He got kicked out of school and wasn't allowed to use magic. For whatever reason, Newt got kicked out of school and is completely allowed to use magic and nobody has ever stopped him. Oh. So, hmm. I don't know. I maybe, don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe he just, like, fucks the bed really, really, really hard and then uh, eventually uh, Dumbledore is like, YOU MOTHERFUCKER! And just keeps and he bans anyone from uh, ever doing magic. Like, no, I don't okay, think that's gonna be Newt. This one. He just had a he just had a headache. There's no way that's gonna be Newt's fault because it's like yeah, the he's banned from I mean, traveling and every like the the uh, magistry or whatever Ministry of Magic they yeah. hate his fucking guts. They hate him so yeah. much. Yeah. They hate yeah. Newt so much. <laughs> and yeah. well, maybe it is some kind of law that came into effect well, after. I don't think so. It maybe it's like maybe it's like if you complete four years of school or maybe maybe Hagrid actually got in trouble and it wasn't just that he got kicked out of school but he got kicked out of school and was in trouble I, I don't remember no, it was maybe definitely J.K. Rowling just forgot you definitely had to pass your owl exam or whatever to be allowed to use magic outside of school so well maybe you needed 
Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you needed to be a fourth year or something. And maybe at yeah. the point that he got kicked out, he, it was already okay for him to use magic. But Does I remember explicitly that he got magic. kicked out because it was okay to use magic. He was like, I don't need to go fuck anymore. I remember explicitly that he was kicked out of Hogwarts. So <clears throat> that was like a plot point in the first yeah. one, but I don't remember. What were you gonna say, Dawson? I think I think that the the Weasley children use magic when they're at home. I think maybe you're not allowed to use magic in public, but. It's okay if you don't, like... I no, because I don't think... I think while you're enrolled in school, you're allowed to use magic, but before you're enrolled in school, you're not supposed to. But not outside, yeah. of, not outside of Hogwarts. Like, Harry was never allowed to use magic at home, but, but Ron was fine. I don't know. I don't think Ron was fine. I think that his, his mom just didn't fucking tell Dumbledore on him. Well, no, because oh, if, no, if they ever used mm -hmm. magic outside of school, they would know, because they had, like enchantments or something so yeah they, they definitely yeah. knew when people used magic outside of school um i i don't know this is getting into yeah. like very specific harry potter lore that we yeah, none of the, us the, clearly the remember <laughs> yeah yeah the jk rowling probably jk rowling doesn't <laughs> well no yeah. i mean there might there might be a very good specific justification but i don't fucking remember i don't know about very and good I've never but there liked... might be a specific justification yeah by the time i got to the last book of harry potter i was basically done with it <laughs> i read the last yeah. one just because it's like i read the first six so i might as well finish the last one and i watched I... all of the movies because i watched tons of movies so yeah but i don't know it's like after jk rowling wrote the deathly hollows it just seems like all of her books are just throwing dart like throwing a fucking dart at the political well, this one wasn't a dart board this wasn't a book though <laughs> this was just a script that was not based on a book i feel like this would have been a better book I'm, if it was are you sure a better I'm story if sure it was based on a book I'm pretty sure Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them is a book. They published the uh, screenplay they, they, after yeah. the movie came out. Uh, and also, they, and, and, they and, have, like, a Fantastic Beast that is, like... Yeah, actually, the, the, the title of the book is a different yeah. book, because there is a book that yeah. is titled that, but it is about magical creatures. It is not about this story. Because yeah. the reason why the character of Newt matters at all is because, because he, he wrote, wrote book. that book that they use yeah. in Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah. Also, Nicholas Flamel shows up. He's yeah. kind of funny. He's like a skeleton. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't really want to talk about this movie that much, but like... Not it was good. just so bad that I had to talk about it. Like, I, I don't know. I enjoyed watching it at the time, but like thinking about it <clears throat> in, in retrospect, it was like, it was a really not good movie. You know, right. it's one of the yeah. it's one of those things. It was like I went there not expecting it to be that good, and I'm not really disappointed with having seen it. I guess because I knew what I you was going to. Fucking, yeah, and I was I like, I, I basically went there to watch magical creatures be on the screen. Like, I it was cool to look at, yeah. <laughs> ultimately. But as and a learn where to find them, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but as a movie, it's just not a good movie. So I don't know. Yeah. Do yeah, you see, guys like, what? <clears throat> but I feel like Fantastic Beasts as a series would have been much more interesting if it were like, like, like this obviously would have been a c completely different movie, and that's what I'm advocating. If it were like the Adventures of Newt Shromander, whatever the fuck his name is, as like the magical Steve Irwin, like that would have been <laughs> really cool, right? <laughs> um. Like, showcasing a bunch yeah, of fantastic I creatures. I don't know. It's kind of interesting <clears throat> because they're talking about... They're take, they're taking two, like, plot threads and putting them together in a way that I don't think people anticipated. Right. You know, like... <clears throat> Newt is kind of involved in this Grindelwald stuff quite a bit, but the Grindelwald stuff is actually what you care about. Mm-hmm. Or, or what they want you to care about anyway, right? Right, but yeah. in a way, it's like Newt is just there for no reason because he really doesn't have any control over what's happening. It, in the first one, he made plans. He actually had a th thing he wanted to do, and he did it. You know, they they yeah. like had to sneak into a place, so they did a thing. They had to do this thing, so they did a thing. Like Newt had like goals and intention in the first movie, mm -hmm. and this one he just doesn't. He's just, he has like a vague notion of. I want to find my girlfriend and tell her that I like her. 
it's like a theme park ride. It's like where his previous Harry Potter books had a, a story and plot like stop Voldemort, get through these challenges yeah. in school. This one is like the Harry Potter theme park. It just where feels like a, a ba- it feels like a bad theme the park Harry ride. Potter. I don't know. Because I feel like they could have done it better <laughs> if they, they tried. I feel right. like th- this is a movie that like they should have written all three scripts at the same time and made sure each script st- stood alone. Right. But this movie doesn't stand alone. It it and like <clears throat> Fell's over there like no, I've been telling you fuckers this shit for years. <laughs> in no I I had this thought. I swear to God. I left that movie and one of the first thoughts I had was, well that fails the Jupiter Jupiter ascending test. <laughs> <laughs> And, like, before, when you were telling me about that Jupiter Ascending test, I was like, I don't know. I think most movies would, like, that seems like an oddly specific thing to complain about. Because I really and don't you, feel like it happens that much. Yeah, and then and I, you know, I watched, I came out of this movie and I swear to God went, oh my fucking God. <laughs> you were like, literally nobody would give any shit about this movie if the word Harry Potter wasn't in the title. Literally nothing <laughs> of consequence would happen if it didn't involve Dumbledore uh grindelwald and newt yeah and not even newt as a person but newt as the concept of fantastic <laughs> beasts and where to find and them where to find them newt as the newt titular... as the author of the title yeah <laughs> yeah as the author of the titular fantastic beast so in <laughs> it, like that felt i almost think you should watch it just so you can reconfirm that theory as like the best the oh, best no, I'm, single, I'm the best single like example of what you're talking about. That's it, pr- I mean, yeah, I wouldn't surprise me. It's yeah, almost what I've heard extent. about this uh, movie is uh, f- like 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 the the reviews I've seen for this movie like it has like a forty <clears throat> on Rotten Tomatoes, but the negative reviews are much much more like venomous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, than the it's... positive ones that were like, it's okay. Yeah. It it was like, it, it it's one of those movie movies where if you're going into it expecting to see Fantastic Beasts, then it <clears> does that. You see yeah. some cool things. Um, people yeah, complained I, about the CG times, for one like... of the creatures, but you know, for the most part, it, it's it's it is what it says it is, kind of. Yeah. Well. Okay. Look, I've been asking this all day. Do you actually learn where to find the Fantastic Beasts? Because that's what I want to know. New York City, baby. Technically, I wanna, no. I wanna... Technically, I... no, because the only the the most fantastic beasts in the movie are mm. ones that were in a traveling circus and are from China. Mm. So, I mean, I want you, to learn. You, you know where you find them thing. if you mean by find them generally somewhere in China. <laughs> you <laughs> the, can find them in from. Newt's traveling menagerie of beasts. Yeah. Well, you know what, Dumbledore? You know, I think though, I'm just going to go on the fucking road. There were more beasts, beasts in the first one. <clears throat> yeah, there if, were. There if were, we are, the first one sure had a lot of beasts. If if we are about done with Harry Potter, I think I found a good segue here because if you really want to learn about fantastic beasts and where to find them, you can talk to my good good friend Einar Frey, who is back in Path of Exile for Betrayal League. It sure okay. is, huh? Uh, so, are, is this going to be quick? Because we're already an hour and a half in. I know we're, we we're very well news over, yet, but I'm I'm, ex- I'm extremely yeah. excited to talk about Path of Exile. I can probably save a lot of the like specific league mechanics for next time, maybe. But um path of exiles betrayal league is the newest league it's 3.5 of course they did a new league where there's um you know all that and whatnot like like all the new mechanics and stuff that's really in-depth and complicated but of course the the big draw of this patch is that all of your old forsaken masters have betrayed you and joined this immortal syndicate to try to attack you which nobody liked the forsaken master system so that's great that they betrayed you and now you can fight them. Um, what they've done is replace it with the the previous masters, um, Alva Valia, Einhar Frey, and Nico the Mad, um, who all have their own old league mechanics tied to them when you find them in like a map or whatever. So Einhar will come around with you and 
capture beasts for you. Uh, in Bestiary League, the main complaint was that you had to throw nets. So Einhar now throws the nets for you. He also apparently has a thermonuclear missile launcher because I have straight up taken Einhar into boss rooms and had Einhar solo the boss for me. The other masters aren't like that. They don't fucking they don't fucking do any damage, but Einhar will just do the game just play the game for he you if down. you happen to find him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like he he can throw this fire trap which then explodes and also throws out a hundred more fire traps. <laughs> it's yeah, it's crazy. I really like Einhar. Um, along with all of the the Forsaken Masters, they've they've given them like a lot of new voice lines and interaction. Like the old Forsaken Masters would talk about each other briefly, but they never really interacted with each other. Einhar will talk about how much he loves Xana and how much he loves Alva and how much he loves this. And and the new League Master will talk about uh oh yeah Xana wow she's really cute uh in my Xana from Code Lyoko <laughs> yeah uh. Oh uh, yeah, Xana, she's really cute. Uh, it's forbidden for my people to feel the touch of a man, but there's no laws against feeling the touch of a woman, if you know what I'm saying. Um, so like, there, there's all these like new interactions between people that we've kind of gotten to know over the past year by doing their their league. Like, Einhar was with you through all of Bestiary League, and Alva Valia was with you through all of the other three monthly incursion, and Nico was with you in the previous league, which was Delve. So like. Now you're getting to see how those characters kind of mesh together and talk to each other. And unlike the previous Forsaken Masters, all of these characters fucking love each other. And it's great. Um, so yeah, uh, Betrayal League is also really fun. It's, it's like, you know, those detective movie where they have thumbtacks in like different people in places and have the strings connecting Mm -hmm. like they designed it to look like that like your your investigation board has a bunch of people on it with strings leading all over the place and it's very confusing and hard to read and i don't have a grasp on the mechanics enough to explain them so i probably will save that for next time but um if there was ever a time to jump into path of exile it would be now because one of the core mechanics of the game the forsaken masters have just been reworked in order to essentially provide an outlet to add in league mechanics without having to just suddenly they're in the game they they can just tie them to a new master and then seed that master into standard league so now is a better time than ever to jump into path of exile especially with diablo essentially giving them free advertising. <laughs> um, well, yeah. Um, maybe we can talk about it more next week when sure. you've played more of it. Yeah. Sure. Um, I was interested in jumping back into Path of Exile, but it's still like not the big patch that's out yet, right? Uh, you told me to wait for something. Pretty big. Yeah, this, this is the patch this, that this, I did this, say you should wait for, but yeah, this is the patch was going to be announced at some point. <laughs> Yeah, they're announcing 4.0 next year. They plan to release it in 2020. So, uh, oh yeah, like if you're if you're waiting for a big patch, this is probably the biggest patch you're gonna get for a long right. while, and this is a significant rework of the game. So, my yeah. problem is just that <laughs> I would be splitting my time between that and Smash Brothers, and I'm much more interested in Smash Brothers. So, right. Yeah. So you might as well play Smash for a little while. I mean, Path of Exile is gonna be there. Yeah. yeah, I guess. And the more time you wait, the more stuff that will have changed. <laughs> exactly. All right. Um. So we're already over. Do you guys need a break, or do you want to? Just... No, let's uh, just... I can use a break. Okay, I can. Okay, I'll well, take a break. Let's just so, like, call really it quick one. like five minutes then, because uh, yeah, we're good. already like super over, and we're there's yeah, a lot of news. Crazy. So yeah. So in that case, we will be back at <clears throat> five forty-five. Alright. Okay, see you soon. Yeah. And we're back. Hey. Yes, we are. So, for the second half of the show, we're going to talk about game and movie news. There is a ton, especially video game news. And I found more while we were talking about other stuff earlier that I wasn't paying attention to. (coughs) Oh, Oh, no. So, why don't we start with movie news, because there's a lot less of that. Yeah, Yeah, it's really quick. And for the most part, I'll just get the big one parentheses, one thing that's been happening in movies. 
Uh, nobody wants to fucking host the Oscars. Nobody wants to deal with that shit. Everybody doesn't want to have any fucking thing to do with the Oscars. It was going to be Kevin Hart, but then people dug up some <laughs> racist things, that, well, homophobic things that he said on Twitter. And uh, he did apologize, but said, fuck this, I'm not going to do the Oscars. So nobody wants to fucking do the Oscars, is essentially the news. Why the does Oscar nobody want to do the Oscars? I, swear, All right. I know why Kevin Hart doesn't want to do the Oscars, but why does nobody else want to do the Oscars? Because uh, everybody who... who like would be the host of the Oscars would have people dig through their <laughs> Twitter to find dirt on them to fuck them up. Right. Well, not <clears> people that. are just actively um, trying to like attack even, people uh, on since, Oscars. I guess. Oh, since oh, who was the guy who hosted the Oscars for like a twenty billion years? It's since he died. The the uh, it's essentially been passed down to a bunch of people, and there were like a couple people who were like, maybe oh, is this gonna be the big Oscars host? And they were like, I don't want to fucking do that ever again. Uh, because essentially, and the the Oscars have been, has been dropping in viewership for one. Uh, people have to keep everyone entertained for the entire time. Uh, they have to they have to do all of this. It's like a huge event, <clears throat> and if you fuck up, it could destroy your career. Um, and essentially, everyone would rather be sitting in the seats watching the Oscars than actually hosting it. And you have to be like consistently funny. But and stay like topical, but stay like, but you gotta ride that fucking line, right? You can't fuck up with that shit. So it's just too difficult to host the Oscars. Not don't too they have people, but too. Don't risky. they have people? Don't they have people who like? I also also um, the ratings have gone down consistently in the Oscars. Yeah, so like, yeah, that shit <laughs> it, was fucking it, terrible. <clears throat> it has the potential to completely fuck your career without yeah. the benefits of hosting of, uh, Oscars. People, yeah. <laughs> don't yeah, but don't they have like people who just write all the shit that they say for them? Don't they just have to read a script? No. no. Oh. Huh. It's like being the host of something. You have to like be. <clears throat> you have to be do stuff off the cuff. It's not like they're um, reading a teleprompter. Yeah. Right. So. Huh. Remember when Neil Patrick Harris hosted the Oscars? <laughs> I really like that guy, but God, he did a bad job. <laughs> <sighs> Shit. He's a fun host, though. Yeah, he's he was he was fun, but like he was struggling with the fucking jokes. Like you gotta be like, uh, what is it? Uh, you, you gotta be fucking a chin man, funny. You know what a man I'm talking about? I don't know. Uh, I feel like I've seen him host other. <clears throat> God, my throat's all messed up. <clears throat> I feel like I'm, I've heard him host other stuff, and he's been pretty funny. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it was just a fluke? I don't know. Yeah, maybe it was just a fluke, or, like, maybe it's just the Oscars is really constricted. What they're thinking of doing is uh, having, like, a cavalcade of hosts that all, like, host one particular catego category or something like that, or, like, come on, like, you know, a <clears throat> quote-unquote Saturday Night Live-like thing. That would make more sense and probably be more interesting. <laughs> Yeah, 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 and would probably work better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, and that's that's pretty much that's pretty much all they have about the Oscars. Uh, the fucking the Oscars is in turmoil, and it's hilarious. Anyway, next off, uh, there there was an article. Uh, oh, what was it? Uh, <laughs> who was? Oh yeah, Deadline. Deadline released a article. Uh, it would be really great if it would just redirect me back to my article. I keep forgetting these things are ads. I just see like numbers. Uh, Deadline released a uh, article which uh, was a uh, it's it sort of like interviewed someone about uh, why Netflix was canceled, and it was essentially because Di uh, Disney Plus kind of made Netflix feel like they didn't really have a stake in any of the Marvel properties, and that's why they were canceling all of the stuff. Right. I feel like we already knew that. Yeah. yeah I'm well, sure. it was it was it was a thing that like we already knew, but it was officially confirmed. It was like, yeah, this is obviously why they're doing <laughs> that, but now they like actively went out and said it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the next piece of news: uh, Jordan Peele's Us uh, finally got a uh, got a plot synopsis. Uh, Jordan Peele is the man who is a member of Key and Peele and directed Get Out. And it's going to be a home invasion movie. And I'm excited. So yeah. And last piece of news. You finished really that before I even finished typing it. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. 
And the last piece of news is that Peter Jackson is going to quote unquote return to his naughty years and remaster Brain Dead, uh, Meet the Feebles, and Bad Taste in 4K. Thank you, Peter Jackson. This is coming off of Peter Jackson's recent remaster of World War Two, World War One footage called "They Shall Not Grow Old," which colorizes it, puts it in a frame rate that looks like film, and adds sound to it. Some right. historians are pissed off, and some and many people are very, very happy about this. Whose side are you on? Anyway, that's movie news. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's, that's it. That's all. Uh, Oscars. I'm glad that didn't take too long because boy, do we have to fucking slog through a million yeah. game news. Let's I don't get know through about this. Slog. There's a lot of good shit. Yeah, here, there's a lot though. of good shit. But let's get through this uh, awful news first about the Fallout. Okay, so... Oh, Fallout bad oh, yeah. controversy. Yeah, that's right. This is uh, <laughs> this this. Okay, this is. I I've been pretty like uh. This doesn't really matter to me. I understand how it sucks to other people <laughs> about the Fallout 76 stuff. I've been pretty like, ah, I don't debacle. really, I don't really care. This is a huge debacle, and people are getting fucked left and right. Yeah, you didn't even really but care about this, the canvas bag thing. Like, other yeah, I didn't that. care about. It's like ah, nylon bag, bag whatever. I want nylon the helmet. bag. I don't care. I wanted the helmet. Yeah, this is fucking inexcusable. So. Last week, now granted, this only was there for about 30 minutes from probably reportedly about 200 people, but about 200 people for 30 minutes could see every single support ticket that was opened up on their website. Every single one. And, and they all came, had uh, addresses and yeah, shipping addresses and this, credit this card numbers right, and stuff. Right after they promised the canvas bag compensation, they would just make a canvas bag, send it to people. If you opened a ticket <coughs> with your, your invoice for the game, your home address, and your f firstborn child, like, yeah. like you had to put so much personal information in these support tickets to get your canvas bag. And then immediately after they told everybody to do it, and a lot of people did because they wanted their canvas bag, including me, they... <laughs> This this bug happens. Like, if you can't fix one single bug in anything you do, Bethesda, you have to get this right before it fucking goes out. That, that, that is so important, and they fucked up. They did not do it. Like, I don't think they can save themselves from this one. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I mean, I don't know. It, the, it, the, it's gonna... It, and again... Like, I'm pissed about this, and it didn't affect me, because you can see if your support ticket had been opened by a moderator, and I checked, and no, and my support ticket had not been opened by a moderator. And the reason that people could see that is because they the, the, could see all the support tickets is because for so, something was falsely flagging their accounts as moderators. Yeah. So I know that mine <laughs> wasn't viewed or looked at, but, like, this is such an insane breach of security. And it wasn't even like hackers got into it. It was just like they fucked up. Bethesda the fucked up. Yeah, yeah. It's some just... people are thinking that it's malicious, but I don't. In I, fact, I don't I think will it's actively malicious. not because uh, I think that it's so much funnier that Bethesda just fucked up really bad. <clears throat> no, it's just it's just dumb because, and and we said we talked about this a little bit off the podcast, but it's like we totally thought that at the end, like <clears throat> last week when we talked about it that that last thing was going to be the end like there's, oh yeah there's yeah, nothing like, else that they could possibly do that would make it worse at this point and yeah we lo said and that behold <laughs> they made it much fucking worse. beer guys they made it so much worse that the bethesda cock that has been jammed down my throat for 20 fucking years wiggled out a little bit like i can't this is there's no way that i could possibly defend this or even say i don't care yeah, it's crazy. I I don't know. I don't even know what to say about it. It's like they fucked up hard. There's probably going to be another lawsuit about this, no doubt. And this is one that they probably aren't going to 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 wiggle out of. Well, or like, or they'll give some. They might have to do that thing where they give uh, like identity theft protection or something to people. Although I guess it it might just be addresses. I I don't know. 
I guess we'll see I mean, okay. what, what they do with this, but... Okay, if somebody had... Here, here's what I had to put on my invoice. I had to put my full name, my home address, my email address, and um, the invoice from Amazon had the last four of my debit card on it. Um, so... I don't think identity that's theft, enough. I don't, yeah. I, yeah, I don't think it's enough for identity theft. It is 100% enough to dox people. Like there, you could, you could yeah. absolutely dock somebody with that, like get every bit of information that. But again, could. I don't know how much, like, I mean, they could potentially put email addresses with, with a, like home addresses, but I, unless it's someone who actually like matters, I don't yeah. know that, but like, um, I don't think this will really hurt anyone in right. actuality but it's like really fucking stupid yeah uh, regardless of whether it actually end. like whether there will be consequences for the people who were affected it like for one it's unintentional or otherwise it's a violation of the gdpr that everybody has been talking about this year um, well it's not a violation it unless they don't do things there's actually a uh, section in the gdpr about what to do when it happens Oh okay. Yeah, it's well, not. It's not a violation to have a data breach. Everyone's going to have data breaches. This is a especially stupid way for one to happen. But it's not like th it's, this is it's not, not an like the company thing. gets in trouble if somebody hacks them. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> it, unless they just don't do anything about it. Exactly. So th there's actually like rules for what they have to do. Anyway, let's move on. Um, yeah. I'm so the next. In Dude. better, no, much, I'm, much no, better. I'm gonna no, I'm gonna sorry. jump forward into the game <laughs> okay. award stuff. Oh, okay. this is why I wanted to be the one who introduces topics. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I mean, the next one had a good segue, but <laughs> whatever. Um, yeah. So we're gonna go through some of the game award stuff. Uh, okay. I mean, actually, that first one is part of the game award stuff, anyways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, uh, so I, we're going to talk about some of the major game announcements. So I guess we might as well start with the Outer Worlds, since you guys are looking at it. Mm. Uh, I love <clears throat> this trailer. I can't say I love this game, but I love this trailer. <laughs> you know what's really funny about this trailer to me? And, what? And your reaction to it in particular. What's um, that? We were talking, so a few weeks ago, we talked about how Obsidian bought Microsoft, or Microsoft bought Obsidian. Bought Obsidian yeah. And you were like, I don't care. They haven't done anything I've cared about since, um, since Fallout, since New, Vegas. Fallout New Vegas. And I'm like, <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, there was like Pillars of Eternity and stuff. And then, like, they come out with the Outer Worlds, which is essentially a, um, Borderlands esque with kind of Fallout writing kind of stuff going on in it yeah it looks like which just sounds phenomenal which like, is totally up your alley that, yeah there's oh, yeah. nothing in that sentence that sounds <laughs> even remotely bad you know what's good for me too what's that i like that it's not post-apocalyptic um yeah it's more of like a rim world type thing not yeah, well, rim it's world the game yeah. but like but it's like, more like yeah. borderlands in that it's in the future and maybe shit sucks in some <laughs> places but it's not because uh bombs fell and everyone's fucked it's because you know there's just it's like a colony far away from people we're getting you know fucked by the big corporations again yeah so i i'm really like i'm really into this and the trailer looks really good yeah and it's the first it's the first like third person shooter that that obsidian's done that hasn't been connected to a property like fallout so it's really exciting to see like where they go when they have the freedom to do whatever they want rather than being at least somewhat beholden to previous canon and lore and yeah. i mean you can say that they did fallout one but you know, you know what i mean <clears throat> yeah I, I think it was Fallout two it says what? fallout it says fallout yeah, of the no, black 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 isles is the studio that turned into obsidian and they did fallout one what? and two okay all right yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, I, I one of my favorite things about this trailer is that, and I'm looking on it on YouTube. Uh, mm. as uh, one of the things that YouTube does is like, uh, if you put a gaming video, you can list a uh, video as being part of or from a specific game, and the Obsidian trailer is listed as Fallout Four. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Funny. Um, so Obsidian is coming for fucking Nex. Uh, oh yeah, Bethesda. Bethesda kind of fucked him over a little bit, uh -huh. and now they're just like living. Yeah, it looks and and honestly, like it, the game looks. Really I good. I love the setting. It's it's still just a cinematic trailer. There is no oh, gameplay yeah. in this. No, there's a little bit. No, of yeah, game. There, there's there's, My, a uh, little bit. there's a little teeny bit of trailer. My uh, overlay is fucked up, so I have to like. <laughs> oh, that sucks. I need I need to fix it because apparently YouTube changed the resolution that stuff defaults at. <laughs> so <laughs> like it changed yeah. the the size of the window. So I have to like go back and fix it now. But okay, y yeah. So so it looks like art style wise and and setting wise, it looks like Borderlands. It looks like it play takes place on a downtrodden shitty world, but. There's people. It, it's it's similar enough to Fallout in that regard. It's it's a downtrodden, shitty world. It's just not made downtrodden and shitty. It's By just, nuclear they're, bombs. They're yeah. still developing in the yeah. first place. It's just backwoods. Yeah, it looks really fun. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm very excited. I'm very excited to to like have all of these interesting mechanics that that they have. Like, I I want to see, like, a reputation system like New Vegas had. That would be great. I want to see, like, I want to see, like, really good gunplay like Borderlands has. And the, the little teeny bit of gameplay we've got looks like it has some really interesting weapons and stuff. Like, there's, like, this say plasma the launcher. I wouldn't say the gunplay is that great in Borderlands. It actually... Really? Yeah. That's, like, to me, that's, like, the only interesting part of Borderlands 2 and pre-sequel i would well i would say that some of the guns were interesting and stuff but i wouldn't say that they were particularly impactful or felt good but i mean i i don't like destiny but i thought the shooting was a lot better in destiny <laughs> okay yeah. yeah yeah so maybe not the gun play but like yeah. the gun design the gun like variety the, right yeah, yeah that's, that's it yeah weapon yeah. variety is probably more apt i would say yeah <sighs> and like the creative things because like from a technical standpoint the Borderlands games are like fucking incredible bastions of creativity. <laughs> the yeah. fact that one of the guns, as a reload animation, you throw it and it explodes is just wonderful. On yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> um, yeah, I and I like the idea of Obsidian having <clears throat> like writing control like again this. and have it be yeah, able to like do. Do like yeah. a uh, Fallout esque kind of reputation with with people and and kind of RPG esque story going on yeah. in addition the to one, the gunplay. The one uh the one Obsidian game that like I I only I I felt even middling towards was uh oh what was it uh Tyranny. I thought Tyranny was okay and was a little bit disappointed because I knew it was an Obsidian game. Hmm. I but didn't yeah, know uh, that Tyranny was an Obsidian game. I thought Tyranny was like. <laughs> competing with pillars of eternity no nah, it was, it was, was uh, like yeah. the in between of pillars of eternity one and two yeah huh. and uh pillars of eternity one was fantastic and i, I think it might i think it might have been their b too. team or something okay well, <clears throat> but yeah and anyway about it uh <laughs> tyranny was not a bad game yeah yeah and so like this kind of goes back to what we were talking about with movies a little bit um new vegas was very much a game that was very serious in its tone and had a lot of jokes in it and yeah. the jokes didn't feel out of place but it the... felt like people uh laughing at things uh while trying to deal with the fucking problem that the yeah world like is. um like for example that guy in the 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 hoover dam or the power plant named yeah. fantastic he's like they asked me if i had a degree in theoretical physics and i told them i had a theoretical degree in physics like like that guy's that guy's hilarious, but he's not like he's not representative of all of the uh of all of the the characters in the game. Whereas this from the trailer, uh Outer Worlds looks like it's very much a comedic like comedic focus, right? Yeah, but yeah. not in a cringy kind of way, the way that Yeah, Borderlands not was not, not in the way that Borderlands was like 
we have to go for all comedy. Like, not like Borderlands 2. It feels closer to Borderlands 1, where, like, the world is serious and dreadful, but all of the characters in the world seem very uh, uh, animated silly. and silly. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, let's move on to the next game, because there's a lot of stuff to get through. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, I want to, since people are talking about it in chat, I'm going to talk about um the new Far Cry Far Cry New Dawn, which is like a post-apocalyptic version of Far Cry with some really wow, fucking really weird weapons. This game isn't post-apocalyptic. Meanwhile, in Far Cry Town, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's kind of like Junker-style weapons. There's like a uh, different kind of kind of crazy-looking cars with all sorts of graffiti on them. And uh, I think at one point in the trailer, there's a gun that shoots saw blades. So Far yeah, Cry's doing some weird cool. stuff. Yeah, it's like Fallout Far Cry. It looks, honestly, it looks more to me like Mad Max Far Cry. <laughs> yeah. See, I this really, is a I, game that would be fun because it, the guns are better <laughs> in Far Cry. Yeah. So, yeah, for sure. So Dog I, meat. See, there he is in yeah. the trailer. <laughs> so I'm, you know, pretty excited about that. That looks cool. Yeah. I, 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 feel yeah. Like, I feel like that's a good place for Far Cry to go, honestly. Yeah, because yeah, I, I mean, I, like, I they've gone interested. everywhere else. <laughs> I wasn't that interested in the last Far Cry because of kind of what they were doing with the story kind of turned me off, but um, but yeah, this this looks pretty cool. I'm excited yeah. for that one. Seriously. I, I, I kind of <laughs> really want to play that because of, like, the car driving. Okay, Mad Max, just just quick note, Mad Max, the the video game, was one of the, like, next to Fallout New Vegas, I think it may be my favorite post-apocalyptic game in existence, and it, it had everything to do with the, the car driving system, and cars are kind of a big thing about Far Cry, so I'm really excited to see what they do with the post-apocalyptic Far Cry cars, you know? You might want to try the original Rust, because that was also really, really big into the cars. The original what? Rust. Or no. not Rust, the uh, fucking, what, what the fuck was that other game? The id one. <laughs> the id one that we got a new trailer for. Oh, um, Rage. Rage. Rage, thank you. Yeah, it was like, Rust, what the fuck are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, there's Rust a new trailer for Rage 2. Um, yeah. I'm not going to play it, because, like... I don't really have much to say about it other than it kind of looks cool, but I'm not super invested in that series because I never played the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, the thing is, most of what I remember from the first one was uh, uh, it released and it was a huge bug mess and nobody played it. Yeah. I'm going to go through some of the other big reveals. Um, there is a pirate uh, kind of open world survival game made by the ARC team called Atlas. whoop de doo <laughs> I'd be and more excited. Only... I'd be more excited if it wasn't a survival game made by the Ark people because I and it'll only cost you seven thousand dollars before it comes out of beta and take ten years to come out of beta. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like Ark, I don't like the survival elements in Ark because they're too they're too far. Personally, so why would I, I want think... that in a pirate game? Like yeah, that sounds exactly. awful. <laughs> Personally, I I really liked Ark for one thing and one thing only, and it was taming dinosaurs, and that was good enough in Ark to me to keep me playing it for a long time. But I hate everything else about Ark. I no. I finally decided I hate literally everything about Ark except for the fact that you can tame a dinosaur. And that was kind of the opposite. Like I hated the uh, survival elements of Ark to the extent that it made me not want to play any else anything else. Yeah. So. <clears throat> I, I don't know, if Atlas comes out and it tones down the survival stuff, then maybe yeah. I'll be interested, but at, at like at this point in time, I'm I mean, like, really okay, not interested so, in it. So it's a pirate game, right? So it's not like they could force you to build a farm on your ship, right? Like You say like there's, that, there's, there's gotta them be, do it anyway. There's yeah, gotta be could, some other way to get... But they could force you to fish have like fruit otherwise you get scurvy they could have you like need fresh water because the ocean <laughs> doesn't have any of that so mm -hmm. there are th there are things that they could force you to do that might be annoying right but we'll see i yeah i i might keep my eye on it because yeah. i think that that they do have some really good ideas i've always been looking for a good pirate game and, and especially after sea of thieves came out and was kind of uh, not as fun as yeah, we would have liked a um <laughs> having a because this atlas game looks very similar to that idea 
but apparently it has like dragons and and oh good stuff in it too so i don't know i'm sort of interested in it but if it goes if it ends up being a survival game in the traditional sense i am really not interested in it um yeah i get you next thing we got uh there was a stranger three there was stranger things three the game which is a <clears throat> Uh, like 16-bit top like isometric game based on the third season of Stranger Things, which is not out yet. I see. Um, That's peculiar, but okay. Interesting. Uh, we got a Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 trailer, mm -hmm. which apparently is only going to be on the Switch because it's made by uh, Team Ninja. Um, who We're made... basically Nintendo developers. No, they aren't Team Ninja, but they were published by Nintendo. They they also made Neo and Ninja Gaiden. Those aren't games that were only on Nintendo or anything. Uh, Team okay. Ninja just... Yeah, fair enough. I, I think what happened here is Team Ninja needed money. <laughs> they went oh, to Nintendo. Yeah, yeah. Because the Switch was doing well, they went to Nintendo and they were like, sure, we'll give you lots of money, but you have to make it exclusive. And they're like, eh, okay. <laughs> so, uh. Um, um, now... That's probably what happened. I would like to take a note because we always I always have to note this when Team Ninja comes up. I would like to note that Team Ninja is not the same developer as Ninja Theory. Team Ninja makes decent games. Yeah. Uh wait. I might have Wait, which I one might... was which? Yeah, wait, which one is which? <laughs> uh Ninja Theory made Hellblade. Senua's sacrifice. And, and Team uh, Ninja made Ninja Gaiden and Neo. Yeah. So actually, both are good developers. They just do different things. Right. Yeah. I think Ninja, Team Ninja, wait. like, uh, uh, Team Ninja, like, sort of came out of the, the garbage with uh, uh, Hellblade. Yeah, they did. Right, because... No, Team no, Ninja... that was Ninja Theory. Oh yeah, Ninja <laughs> Theory came out of the garbage with Ninja Hellblade. Ninja Theory. Because previously, Ninja... they, uh, like... They made, uh, DMC... Kung Fu Chaos and okay, but uh, that's it. Well, the, they made Heavenly the Infinity. Sword. Uh, they made he Fury, the, okay. the, the really bad Metroid game. Okay, one second. That that was Team Ninja. Oh, that was Team. Okay. Yes. Okay. They made Heavenly Sword, which was good but short. They made Enslaved Odyssey to the West, which was good. Devil May Cry. Say what you will about the story. The actual gameplay was fine. Um, and then they made Hell Hellblade. So. And they did the the like combat of Disney Infinity, but so Team Ninja or Ninja <laughs> Theory is not a bad company by all by any means. Um, but also we're talking about Team Ninja, which did Neo and Ninja Gaiden, so that's like different yeah. anyway. And, yeah, and Team Ninja is the one who did Metroid. Fuck. Uh, what? Which Fuck one? Shit. Was it Other M? Garbage. Yeah, Other M. That's the one. Thank you. Yeah. I'm like the shitty, the shitty Metroid that can only be other M. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's but, no I mean, other Metroid game that anybody thinks is shitty. <laughs> but Neo was really good, and Ninja Gaiden are classics. Yes. So. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. There's also a Mortal Kombat 11. So anyway, trailer. I tried to clarify that, and I just made it even more confusing for all yeah, of us. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. I had to, like, look stuff up while we were talking about it. <laughs> Me too, man. But I guess that's fair, because actually when I saw Team Ninja, I thought Sinu was Sacrifice, so... Right. Um, yeah. It is what it is. Uh, Mortal Kombat 11. So um, if you remember them for their bad games, Team Ninja is Metroid, Other M. Ninja Theory is DMC. DMC, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't even think DMC was that bad from a gameplay perspective, I'm but... It it tried to sell itself on being Devil May Cry, and it was. It was a it was a pretty Devil good it was a pretty fair, um, <clears throat> spectacle fighter. It was fine. It just I mean, wasn't like, that hard. It just wasn't as hard yeah. as previous DMCs, but that's right. really the only difference. Which is yeah. <clears throat> um, there was a Dragon Age teaser. Dragon Age, like the next Dragon Age. Yeah. Uh, Bioware Nifty. Dragon Age from the, you know, Inquisition series and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay. so that's, you know, it's whatever. Yeah. Uh, oh, Crash Team Bioware. Racing? Ooh, what? Yeah, like, it's like, getting remastered. Like a remat? Okay. Oh, 
Well, I'm with yeah, that that's one I feel like they should have just uh, made a new one. Made a new one, seriously. Well, I don't know what the difference would be, though. Uh, What's the difference more... between remaking the old one and... and like, cause... Make more content? <laughs> yeah, it's essentially just more content. Adding new uh... characters into it, a uh, ton more maps. But, I mean, like, they only have maps. the three games. There, There hasn't really been other Crash games, so... If you only have Crash characters... All of the characters from Crash were in Crash Team Racing, so it's not like you could add stuff unless you're trying to cross over with people, which would not be the same kind of game which anymore. Which they did! Yeah, with that's Spyro. what I'm saying. Ah! Oh. What? No, I don't think so. Wait, wait, was that not a, was that not like a racing, like, crossover thing? I could have no. sworn. No, Crash Team Racing was literally yeah, a Mario was, Kart like... with nothing but Crash characters. That's, that's what it okay. was. Um, yeah. I mean, granted, they could have done something like that, but I don't even know who they. You would know what do I was thinking of? Uh, I was thinking of Diddy Kong Racing had a lot of uh, oh, crossover yeah, yeah. characters in it, like Conker, who, by the yeah. way, Conker yeah. from Conker's Bad Fur Day was created for Diddy Kong Racing. He was not created for <laughs> for Conker's Bad Fur Day. They took oh, yeah. him no, out of Diddy no, Kong Conker Racing. Conker actually, no, Conker predates Diddy Kong Racing as well because they there was really? a different Conker game. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was supposed it was... to be like a super kids children game. Yeah. Yeah. Like 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 one of those edutainment games. Yeah, so it I don't know. I mean, this is like fine cuz I don't know what else they would do unless they wanted to add <clears throat> more tracks which they could probably do anyway. Yeah, that's So true. like I I don't know. I don't know how many tracks that game came with, so it might have been a lot anyway. I, I don't know. Yeah. It was probably like 8 that I definitely like a standard number of tracks for the era. <laughs> I definitely played Crash Team Racing back in the day, but I don't really oh, yeah. remember it that well. For sure. Unfortunately, Crash Team Racing and Diddy Kong Racing and all those weird racing games just lost out to Mario Kart. Mario Kart's yeah. all people care Well, the about. only reason they existed was because they were rip-offs of Mario Kart. <laughs> Mario Kart, yeah. It's true. It had 17 tracks. Oh, wow. So that's actually kind of a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that is kind of a lot. Um, how many characters did it have? It had, uh, also a lot. I'm not gonna try to count them. One, okay, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Nineteen cards. You just said you weren't gonna try and count. Yeah, I was, I wasn't gonna, but then I did. So there's nineteen <laughs> characters and seventeen tracks, so that's actually pretty good. <laughs> We got a, a distinct lack of Ripper Ruin here. I'm pretty disappointed. Oh, no, there he is. <laughs> yeah, he's one of the last ones on the list. All right, well. I always played Tiny. Tiny the Tiger. You would. Hey, that was before I knew stuff. <laughs> before I thought things about things. All right. Um, <laughs> I just <laughs> thought he was funny because he was huge and he was called Tiny. I don't know. If you say so, man. All right. Uh, another thing that was announced at the uh, Game Awards is Fortnite. Uh, Fortnite has had this limited time playground mode, and it's coming back as a permanent edition called Fortnite Creative. So it's an alternate mode where you can like make your own stuff in it, and then best survival game. Fortnite. Fortnite's the best survival game. Yeah. Well, it's not. I, I don't think it's a survival game in the in the same sense as something like best Minecraft, but content creator, best content creator, Fortnite. Fortnite creates all kinds of Will content. Will you guys Good shut job. up? Fortnite didn't win fucking anything hardly. Yeah, it won like best multiplayer. It, like it straight up though. did win best content creator though. Ninja won best content creator. No, he, and literally no, the only didn't. thing he does is Fortnite. Yes, no, he, he did. didn't. The content creator was that furry in the first yeah, Sonic Fox. No, that's best esports player. Oh wait, yeah, that yeah, that's right. Those are yeah. two different categories. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Best yeah, no, you're right. well, whatever. Best then it was like, <laughs> then it was like two or three things. Like Red Dead Redemption won more shit. It did. I'm ac I'm really surprised about that actually. But I'm, I'm not like, pleasantly. I'm pleasantly surprised. Don't get me wrong, but I don't know. Like I don't think Fortnite would have won much else because it wasn't up for Game of the Year because it technically isn't out. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Except it kind of is, but it kind of not because the the 
the Battlegrounds thing is technically kind of out, but the actual like Fortnite the game isn't out. So who knows where Fortnite stands in the in the you know whether it's out or not kind of ballpark. Yeah. But so it won multiplayer, but it wasn't even eligible for uh, Game of the Year this year. So I don't know. Right. It, it really yeah. wasn't even nominated in a ton of things. That's true. Um, on a side note, Epic is no longer making Unreal Tournament. Hmm. I mean, it's still kind of in development, but it's like on the shelf. It, they're so not, it's they're in not actively, development hell. They acknowledge that they're not actively working on Unreal Tournament. So like, people already knew that because the last patch was like July two years ago. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but but now they're but saying they've actually come out and said it. Yeah, they're saying yeah, we, we're not canceling it, and you can still play it right now if you want. But nobody's working on it because everyone's working on Fortnite. Yeah, yeah, so that's kind of where that's at. Uh oh yeah, this is kind of huge news. Um, uh, wh- while we're on the topic of Epic Games, oh god, um, oh god. So Epic is creating their own digital storefront or now you can buy non-epic games on it which before it was pretty much only epic games so So, what what makes this kind of different is uh, steam takes a 30 percent cut from from games and stuff profits and stuff they sell on the marketplace this is pretty standard it's um uh comparable with like the itunes store and the google play store what Epic Games is doing that's different is it's only planning on taking 12% from, okay. from the sale, and the rest would go to the developers. Um, so, yeah, and, and then, like, another kind of controversial thing that happened, which is, like, whatever. Um, Steam made <clears throat> it so that if you sell, like, a, a million dollars in revenue or something, then you... <laughs> that then you pay a reduced fee. <laughs> so, like, if you crack the, the really high end, then they reduce the cost to, to the developer, and that's basically to reattract people who are all making their own storefronts all over the place. But after... See, Go ahead. What this... What this... This, uh... This article says Epic Games to launch developer-friendly storefront to compete with Steam. What it reads to me is Epic Games to launch another failure of a storefront to compete with Steam and good old games because those are the only storefronts that anybody is going to use. It doesn't matter how enticing you are to developers. What matters is how many people are going to buy from your storefront. And everybody is buying from Steam or good old games. This is kind of the difference. Well, first of all, they're not buying from good old games, hardly, because... uh... That actually, the, this has happened kind of not that long ago, but you know the really? you know that new Witcher game that's like the yeah. Gwent game. Yeah. Oh yeah. The developers, uh, CD Projekt Red, put out or talked about how they made like nothing <laughs> off of that game when they put it on G- uh, good old games, and that's why they're bringing it to Steam soon oh, because it, they basically weren't making enough off of it. So, so even yeah. good old games, which was kind of like the biggest name next to Steam, can't compete with it. Yeah. yeah, kind of further reinforces my point. <laughs> but yeah. it doesn't matter what developers right are putting, putting it on there. Like, like the, originally they wanted to sort of like monetize it under their own fucking thing. But I think here's like, the difference. Like, oh, I guess we just gotta use Steam. This is kind yeah. of what the difference is, I think. Um, on, and and this is why stuff like uh, Origin even exists. Um, they can put exclusive titles on the Epic Games Store. So if if they have this lower revenue and they make a deal with someone, they can woo people over to release only on Epic st- uh, Epic Store which forces people to to check it out. Plus sure, there but is also, a, but there's also, also well let me finish my thought. Okay, sir. There's sure. also the fact that Fortnite is so immensely popular that it's going to bring people to the platform <laughs> anyway. Like yeah. it is right now the most popular game in the world probably. Yeah. Um, except Maybe League of Legends, potentially. No. I'm pretty sure Fortnite is past no, League of Legends. Like that I, I'm not games. positive. League of Legends is always like one of those ones that you kind of think has is past its prime, but still is like super immensely popular. I'm not entirely sure. It could be either one of the two. Um, the part of the problem is it's hard to get numbers on those because they're their own sectioned off games. 
Um, right. But Fortnite, regardless of if it's the first or second most popular game in the world, uh, it is enough, yeah, it's enough people are going to... Enough people have the Epic Launcher on their computer anyway to play Fortnite that it doesn't matter. Like, people will see the store. Yeah. It's the same reason why, like, Discord as a store is, like, not a terrible thing. It's because people actually have to use Discord all the time. Yeah. So yeah. the store's just there, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. It, it is the same argument that I used for Discord being a store. I was like... Because I was like, oh, don't fucking... This other store is stupid because they can't compete with Steam. But, like, literally everybody who is involved... Basically, at this point, everybody who plays video games has Discord. Right. Yeah. And, and so, I think part of the reason why GOG isn't as effective at courting people is just because they they don't do they don't there's no exclusives on GOG really except for like really old stuff that isn't carried by Steam like there's there's right. really no reason to go to good good old games unless <laughs> you're really trying to avoid DRM yeah and like that's the only compelling reason and yeah, even and then their the catalog yeah even then their catalog is like awful compared to Steam. Yeah, so it is like and granted epics uh, what's probably going to happen is a lot of people are just going to put it on steam and epic which, yeah which is fine and if and the people who like have this feeling about wanting to support developers more and, ha and but still have their games in one place they might just buy from from epic store anyway if they have that much thought about it see or, I, or they I... or people who play fortnite will just buy it there so I, don't know. I agree with that sentiment right like support developers more than distributors the developers deserve a, more, a, a bigger cut than distributors in my opinion yeah but steam is so absolutely fucking convenient to use that i cannot find myself another reason to use any other launcher well Steam I mean, it's just too convenient, and that's their. I mean, you say that, but you have the Blizzard app installed. You have, yeah. I mean, when we played Fortnite, you had the Epic Launcher installed. We um, played Fortnite once. I installed yeah. it to play that, and then like, I installed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I installed to play Unreal Tournament, but. Uh, <laughs> But the reason that I the difference and is Quake Champions I have, actually too. The reason it, the difference is I Present. I use Steam. No, that's Bethesda. All right. Yeah, yeah. I use Steam to look at games that I want to buy, whereas I use all of those other pla places because I am forced to in order to play their game. Well, sure. I would never install the Ubisoft launcher if I didn't have to to play Siege. I would never install Bethesda.net if I didn't have to to play Fallout 76. But I would install Steam even if I never played TF2 or Portal. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, yeah but... I... I... You know... And that's where, where a lot of these competing services really fall down. They have a compelling storefront, maybe, but they don't have the, the, the like community tools that are associated with with steam right. so that's that's where a lot of the weakness is for a lot of these games uh or a lot of these competing storefronts that being said yeah. like you said it yourself you use discord to launch stuff anyway a lot of time yeah so if you have this the if you have the epic I'll thing do. installed and you have yeah. a, a game that's only on the epic launcher you can just click it on discord and and it'll right. come up so yeah. in the end it's like in the end, this doesn't really hurt anyone except for people who just don't want Steam. <laughs> yeah. Or don't want anything but Steam. And yeah. really, it's not going to kill Steam to have... It, yeah, it's not going to kill Steam oh, yeah. to have better competition. Oh, yeah. Compet so. competition and, I, and I do oh, like the fact that there is a uh, platform that uh, only has, like, only taking 50% from the uh, fucking developers. 12, yeah. I do really... Well, that, that's, yeah. that's the I, thing. I do really like that. Like, I think that Steam needs competition. I just don't think anybody can do it. Like, I think they can't. I think it's I think it's possible. Um, and actually, I think <clears throat> there's only a few people who can get away with it at all. Uh, Bethesda is, like, a hard ask, and I feel like if Fallout 76 was better, then people would have maybe cared about it more. But, yeah. Um... Bethesda net is kind of a weird thing in general, um, but Blizzard for sure, 
has has a lot of the same tools. So it's like not that weird or whatever. Yeah. And battle.net has been a thing that's like existed for a bajillion years so they can just use that branding on it. Yeah. So yeah. I I think battle.net's fine and I think Epic Games or Epic's launcher or whatever they're going to call it. I don't even know what they're yeah. calling it. But um, that's the thing. I don't I think, think I think th this is the first uh competing store that I think has any potential of working. Any potential right. of, of dethroning Steam. I yeah. don't think they will, but I think they have so, more potential than others in the past. Right. So. Yeah. Like you said, Battle.net. Battle.net isn't really a storefront. It has like a grand total of eight games on it, two of which are not made by Blizzard. Yeah, but total. they're starting oh. to bring other Activision games over, and it's like, mm. at a certain point... I mean, they don't have Destiny on Steam. At a certain point, if they pull Call of Duty off of Steam, then that, that'll be a major thing, which I think they may yeah. have done, but I don't even pay attention to Call of Duty. Yeah, who cares? Um, I feel like Call of Duty's fallen off a lot recently. Yeah, it has, but it's still one of the most popular shooters yeah. in the world. It's I just, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just nobody cares about it as much. Yeah, the same thing with Battlefield. Like, Battlefield's also really popular, but nobody talks about it. Hardly. Yeah, I'm still surprised that EA is still rocking Origin. Like, I, I thought that was going to die, yeah. but they're just, they just won't let it. I almost feel differently about Uplay. I feel like Uplay is a better... They give you more for using Uplay than I feel like anyone else does. Yeah. Um, They, like, they have integrated, like, points and stuff. Like, I, I don't know. They're, there's at least some a, a somewhat compelling thing to have Uplay exist compared to something like Origin. But yeah, right. enough people care about like FIFA and Battlefield <laughs> and all that stuff that people yeah. use Origin and there's like Origin early access and they also have that um like kind of the Game Pass equivalent of whatever EA's catalog is. So yeah. I don't know. There's <clears throat> Origin's still a thing too. It's just I feel like worst case scenario, Epic Games is just gonna be another Origin or Uplay. Um Yeah. Or it might be compelling and they might actually put in features that make it compete with Steam, but I find that unlikely. Because yeah. Epic Games is still a games company and Valve basically isn't a video game company anymore. So. Yeah, they're they're essentially a, uh, a production company. Yeah. Yeah. Um Do we have anything else? I swear we have some about stuff. about uh, this this thing before we Oh, oh no! I, yeah, I, I don't think, think there's uh, yeah, anything I think that's else it. about the uh, yeah. I don't think there's anything else about the game awards. Um, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but Katamari Damacy Reroll is on Switch and Steam now. Oh, Hell it's yeah. on Switch too. Yes. Yeah. Where's my fucking credit card? <laughs> um, why don't you tell me about the Subnautica Below Zero thing? Okay, so uh, Subnautica Below Zero is the standalone expansion pack to Subnautica. Um, real, real shortly, like what we know about it is, it takes place years and years after <coughs> the events of the Subnautica game, and essentially people are going back to that, like the Altera Corporation is going back to that planet to explore and and do scientific research. Um, the news about it is that Ben Prunty who is the composer for Into the Breach and Faster Than Light, it will be doing the soundtrack for the Subnautica expansion. And now, I, I, I like the soundtrack for FTL because I feel like that the soundtrack is very atmospheric. It really makes you feel like you're Spider-Man. I mean, makes you, you feel, feel like, like you're in a spaceship. You're, it, it, yeah, it makes you feel like you're in a spaceship floating through space. And... The good thing about the original Subnautica soundtrack is it really makes you feel like you're underwater. Like it has those slow droning moments and like like it never it's never really in your face with the music, but it 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 gives you this sense of dread and being underwater in the dark with miles of ocean surrounding you. Um so I feel like this man can really pull it off. The reason that they need a new composer is because they fired their old composer for saying racist thing on Twitter just like oh, you know, no. everybody. <laughs> um so yeah i'm i'm actually really excited for uh to to hear what he comes up with for the below zero expansion which should be 
in early access in 2019. So, look All forward right. to that. Fell, tell me about this Monster Hunter patch. All right, so uh, Monster Hunter is getting a new big expansion. It's called fucking what is it called? <clears throat> Iceborne. Called shit. Yeah, it's Iceborne. called Iceborne. Thank you. Uh, it's going to be adding what might possibly be G rank. It said it was going to add like another thing of quests. It's going to be adding a bunch of monsters. It's going to be adding Geralt from The Witcher. Why? <laughs> joke. It uh, Geralt of Rivera from The Witcher. So he's, is he he's like a an NPC? Hunter, <laughs> so is he an yeah. NPC, or do you play, or can you play as Geralt? Yeah, is it like a Geralt? Uh, I think you can play as Geralt. Okay, so it's probably a... Okay, here's what it says. The update reveals Witcher's Geralt of Rivera is heading to the game as part of a special crossover event. Traditionally, in Monster Hunter, crossover events will allow you to get somebody's armor set. So what I'm thinking is you'll probably have, like, craftable Geralt armor from a event quest that is themed like the Witcher. That sounds fun. That does sound fun, yeah. All right. Um... There um, is uh Hey, I hang on. I have something to say about Monster Hunter World. Um sure. I'm not sure how successful this expansion pack will be. I was kind of talking to some of my friends about it, like like my Monster Hunter friends and we kind of like agreed like we will definitely play it, but the content updates have been so sparse for Monster Hunter World that coming out with an X pack almost a year later is like, for PC, it's less of a bad thing, but for, for console players specifically, for, for PC, it only came out, like, a couple months ago, but for console players, they've had to wait over a year for a significant amount of content. Um, all the, Pretty much all they've gotten is Cold Teroth and Behemoth. Those are the only two pieces of content they've gotten in the entire year, and they advertise this game as a platform game where they would constantly update it. So I'm not sure... Like, they probably won't have retained enough players that their entire player base is going to come back. Like, I don't, I don't think when this expansion comes out, they'll break their their all-time player record or anything like I, that. Well, I don't think they, they would break their record just because there are going to be, be people who just bounce off of it in general. But, yeah, sure. But I, I feel like even on console, releasing a major expansion a year later is is like a reason to get back into it. Yeah. So I'm yeah. not. I wouldn't be surprised if this did bring a large, major chunk of people back. To I'm. Monster I'm Hunter. certainly going to go back to it. Oh yeah, like, I'm absolutely going to go back to but, it too. Because I'm. I'm actually really it, excited for this. Is it going to be like, co-released for PC and PS4? I do not yeah. know. Um, uh, have... It hasn't said that it's not, so I'm going to think it is. The winter, I'm going um, to think that it's uh, not. The they winter still... thing. They still haven't released Behemoth on PC. Yeah, that's true. So I'm I'm thinking that they probably won't co-release it. But all right. But uh, well, while I was thinking, uh, like the Halloween fucking thing, like you had to wait on PC for it. But the winter thing came at the exact same time. So I think they're hmm. trying to sort of like catch, catch up. up to where they're they are, so they can start co-releasing stuff. And actually, Iceborne would make sense to be the first time they like do start doing that because yeah, it's true. It's enough time out in that it. they can drop yeah. major content all at once and just bring. Yeah. Because it, it would make more sense to do them both at the same time because then you get the buzz around it from both sides. Where, whereas yeah. if you try to do it half and half, it would, it would make it more difficult. Yeah, they and just have to. They just have to do the Behemoth event on PC, and then they're pretty much caught up because they released Luna Stara recently. I yeah. think that to some for to some extent, especially a game like Monster Hunter, I feel like dropping large patches all at once makes more sense than dropping small fights here and there, because it's it's <clears throat> not going to bring you back to Monster Hunter if you bounced off if they add like just Lunara, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. But if they I add that... a whole new another rank, then it does make sense to come back, and it it's easier to bring people back when they're completely out than it is when they're kind of half in, I think. Yeah, basically, what I've always done with Monster Hunter is just skip every game that doesn't have G-Rank because I know that they're just going to re-release the game with a G-Rank version of the game. So I just skip the ones that don't have G-Rank. I mean, um, if this one did just release G-Rank as part of the, the ongoing content, that'd be cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's what it... from. From the early reports, that's what it sounds like they're doing. 
Although a new slew of quests could just be a new set of monsters for the new map. So we right. don't really know yet. And we well, do know that there are absolutely going to be new monsters for the new map. Um, well, I'm very I'm excited. Even if they did just make an, even if they did just make, didn't make G rank for this. If like I could even see them doing a DLC for <laughs> Monster Hunter that's G rank that would be better than a new release of a game. Right, and that would still make the game more of a platform than, than like a one-off uh, game. Yeah, a one-off game. So I don't know. Yeah. I'm excited to see Barioth. Okay, so Barioth is a snow monster, which it sounds like they're probably going to put in a lot of snow monsters. I'm excited to see Barioth because he is a clone of Tigrex and therefore a clone of Nargacuga. If they add Barioth, they have no reason not to add Nargacuga because the monsters that they've added have pretty much been like clones. They they have a certain set of body types that they use. Like, the reason they were e able to so easily add Lunastara is because it has the same body type as uh, Teostra, who is already in the game. So they were able to easily add that. If they add new body types for monsters with this game, then that will give them an easier platform to add a lot more monsters. Right. They're not they're not clones moveset-wise, but, like, you know, skeleton-wise. They, they have yeah. to build a new skeleton for some monsters. So, pretty interesting. I'm excited for that. And Nargacuga is my favorite monster of all time, so. Right. So, I don't know. That's yeah. interesting. Excited. Uh, yeah. Stardew Valley. They're uh, pushing the multiplayer update for the Switch. Um, all right. It sounds <laughs> like you can connect up to four Switches for local multiplayer. Maybe but, it'll but actually it... function, unlike the PC version. The PC version functions just fine. It's my copy of Stardew Valley that doesn't function. Okay. I can't get it to launch. <laughs> you have it on Steam, right? I have it on Steam. I've, been, I've tried everything. I have no idea. I've looked it up and people have been like, yeah, I have this problem too. <laughs> Never mind, fixed it. <laughs> I ain't even gotten one of those. <laughs> well, um, I mean, it isn't beta it's not actually out so maybe they'll fix something i don't know yeah maybe but it looks like it's not local it's like you can connect consoles up to each other hmm. like online i can't tell hmm i can't tell if it's well it's definitely for sure local um i'm not sure if it's also multiplayer or uh, online or not interesting um so, like, people can sit there with four separate Switches and play together on their own screen. Right. Cool. That's nifty. I mean, I guess it does have online, but <laughs> I don't know for sure. Yeah. Depends on how the infrastructure is, because obviously it can do online. We have it on PC right now. Oh, yeah. Okay. So... Four-player online co-op. And then... <laughs> and then also you can... Uh connect individual for individual switches right. but you can't but okay. there's no like split screen or co-op on the same console so okay all right uh and last thing before we leave is john romero has a new doom mod Woo! the dude is releasing a fucking megawad for doom which is exciting uh it's going to be called sigil and it's going to be a canonic part of doom that takes place between Doom 1 and Doom 2. We've so what? Get back from hell. So what? Did John Romero just decide that Doom 3 and Doom and Doom Eternal are not canon? Because I'll be totally okay if Doom 3 is not canon, but I don't know about Doom and Doom Eternal. Those should, uh, I feel like. No, be those in, take uh... place after Doom uh, 2. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. This takes place well, between Doom 1 and Doom I don't, 2. The, the way that you phrased it, you said a canonic. It oh, says yeah, yeah. it's an unofficial spiritual successor to the Ultimate Doom's fourth episode. Yeah. That Whatever doesn't that sound means. like canon. That doesn't sound like canon on I don't think all. it's canon. Well, well, I mean, I would say more that doesn't canonical even... than like uh fucking in fact, every that doesn't other even wad in the game. Doesn't even sound related to Doom. Well, a it, spiritual is, it is Doom. successor implies that it is not Oh no, it's 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 actively a game a based in it's the a Doom spiritual universe. successor for the last wad that was released with the Ultimate Doom, which wasn't technically a part of it. it's a long story. 
Um, okay. <laughs> I, I think w- what the difference is is uh, Romero is not actually in charge of Doom as a property anymore. Yeah. So I think it's unofficial in that this is his canon, not the yeah. official canon by the IP owner, which right. is Bethesda. Okay. Not the id canon. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> but does they pretty much just let it do whatever they want though so that's i i don't know yeah but yeah. they did they did um i don't know they went different direction with uh the new doom so yeah, yeah. and it's a great direction don't get me oh, wrong yeah, well, it was sort yeah of but people weren't so. happy with maybe yeah. some of the stuff in three but oh yeah for for sure three is um let's but it was john romero though oh i don't know then. I, I i yeah no, yeah, no, yeah. Three was John Romero after Die Katana. Oh, uh, well, well, whatever. I, I, I do not profess to know a lot about Doom, but... I don't know. Doom goes... Do- for me, Doom goes Doom. Doom. Doom Eternal. That's how the story goes for me. Well, Doom 2? What's a Doom 2? Do- Doom 2. It's, it's the... It's is, the that like a Linux, is that like a Linux distro? A Doom 2? <laughs> it's, the, it's the second Doom game that came out after Doom. Like... Like a year after, and it added a bunch of enemies. Nah, it's it's the one. It's the one that added uh fucking revenue. Can we in stop it. before Dawson gets a million hate letters about uh not ca- counting Doom Two? Never yeah. heard of it. We're gonna go to the outro. All okay. right, sounds good. All right, so uh, Thel just released a Katamari Damacy video about him being salty about Smash. And also and a video play. about X4. Oh, yeah. I thought... I think we said that last week, but that's also out. And uh, it's very good. I don't good. think we did, because I put it out this Friday. It's been a long yeah. fucking week, man. I don't know. Yeah, man. Agreed. Things run together for me. It's... Like, I was like, shit, the Game Awards was this week? Fuck. Yeah. Jeez. Um, Okay. <clears throat> Um, Dawson, what what's going on with your stream? Coming up on my stream is going to be more Path of Exile until I get burnt out on this league, which is probably going to take a while because it has like essentially four leagues worth of content in it. You should get a capture yeah. card so you can stream Smash. I should get a capture card so I can stream Smash, but um, no, because those are expensive. Not really. I, expensive I, the problem before was just Nintendo had a ridiculous policy. <laughs> For Nobody, streaming. Nintendo did not give a shit about streaming on Twitch. <laughs> they said they did, but they didn't. Uh, hmm. I don't know. I've watched more Splatoon streams than any other stream. Yeah, but I think I've they had dumbass stuff. rules still, but I, I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. Right. Um, yeah, and what else? I was going to say something else. Um, I don't know. Um, oh, is your schedule is your schedule all normal again? Yeah, or? my no, my schedule is not normal. It's not going to normalize. In order to get my stream schedule, you'll have to visit me on Twitter, which is or just go to it, or just go to the page. Yeah, go here. Or just, yeah, yeah. Or just go here to this page and click on the schedule button, and you'll see my Twitter because that's the only place I'm going to post it. I'm not going to update my schedule every week because Twitch panels are a pain in the ass to use. Um. Mondays will always be the same, and I will never stream on Sunday. However, uh, every other day is up in the air. This week, in particular, I'm going to be streaming at 10 a.m. on Thursday, and on Friday, I will be streaming at noon for as long as I can go, because I am off Friday this week instead of my normal hours. That sucks. And that's essentially why I am changing my stream schedule, because... I don't have normal hours anymore. You would think that being a full-time employee, I would be the one who has a consistent schedule, but no, the part-timers have a consistent schedule and full-time moves all around. Kind of fucking stupid, if you ask me. Well, that sounds like some salt. Yeah, it's okay. (laughs) Uh, I think that's it for us this week. Um, Keep an eye on YouTube. You never know when Thel's going to just randomly release a salty video. It's true. I mean, I had this idea, like, yesterday, and I was like, I should make this video today, and I did. And that's the story of how that video got made. Yep, there we yep. go. That'll do it. Yep. yep. And we're gonna have to remember next year to, uh, so we're doing Game of the Year stuff, and that should come out before the end of the year. 
We're going to have to remember next year to have Smash on next year's <clears throat> list because it's not going to be on this one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. That's it for us this week. Thank you for joining us. And remember, as always, stay beautiful. <laughs>